Right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the uh, satellite bracket of the Archon Team League. I'm Liquid Monk, and joined with me is Liquid Savitz, and our guest caster today is Archon Amaz. How are you doing, guys, Savitz? I'm doing great. I mean, this is we just got the new expansion. There's so many cool strategies, so many cool new cards. Not only that, but a lot of the old cards, like Black Rock Mountain cards, seem viable now. You can you can build a lot of different kinds of decks and. Truth be told, I, I think I've never been this hyped about uh, seeing some competitive matches. Yeah, I mean, we have like shamans on the rise, paladins are doing crazy token stuff, and uh, you know, even druid decks are starting to become really, really fast. So I'm definitely expecting some underdog classes being really, really represented, even priests, for example. We see a lot of dragon priests so far. So um, yeah, I'm kind of excited uh, to see what players are going to bring. And of course, this tournament is... Uh, you know, a $250,000 tournament after all. So, um, the, you know, you have to be a little bit serious when, you know, damage money is on the line. Yeah, this is yeah. pretty much the, the first competitive tournament where we actually get to see the new TG uh, T cards. I don't really want to s put too much faith in your match against uh, Trump Amaz, but it oh. was like, kind of like a more of a show match. Oh, please. That was super competitive, man. I mean, I was, I got a sneeze off a mirrored entity Gromash. And then when he killed my Ronin, it turned into Tyrion. So that was like, wow, that's perfect. Um, Unfortunately, I think Freeze Mage is still pretty, pretty good in this format. So maybe maybe we'll see some Temple Mage. I really hope so. It will be super fun. Yeah, yeah just so many different like kinds. Strong card. Yeah. Effigy is yeah. insane. Yeah. So um, before we go on to the matches, let's take a look at the rules for this tournament. And specifically the rules for the satellite bracket. Okay. And uh, <laughs> there we go. So, well, we are in phase two right now, and um, we already completed phase one. Uh, yeah, there you go. That's the right one. Okay. So once again, it's the same similar format as previously. Each player brings two decks, and there are six decks, uh, six different classes uh, per team. And then, of course, each deck is a blind pick. And once you win of a deck, then it's through, uh, and you don't need to play it ever again. And of course, the first team to lock all their decks wins the match. There's also a bench rule, whereby if a same if a player loses two games in a row back to back, they actually are benched and they cannot be they cannot play any further games until another teammate wins a game for them. So that's basically the format. Yeah. So I think this like by bringing six decks to the tournament, I think in the first uh, phase of the Archon Team League, every team brought like Hunter. Warrior and Warlock. Those are like the standard decks, the st three strongest classes. And then maybe the fourth strongest class was Mage. But now that TGT has come out, it's all like flipped on its head. I sp still expect to see plenty of Warriors, Patrons, especially some Hunters, um, and maybe even some Warlocks. But it's kind of like the underdog classes have gotten the most changes so far. So it's honestly anyone's game at this point. Yeah, I'm really interested to see how Hunter does right now. I feel like even though there, there weren't all that many anti acro cards, there, there are some difficult matchups right now. For example, uh, if you play against Shaman, there might be the healing wave. If you happen to encounter any dragons, be it, uh, let's say, a uh, dragon priest, there's the new 2 mana taunt, there's the new 4 mana taunt. Uh, how do you beat that as Hunter? Yeah, it seems like the stat line is also really, really uh, large as well, right? So, like... Um, you can just heal them up if you t happen to like miss a 5-drop, for example, after you play the Twilight Guardian. And yeah, I guess as a hunter, you kind of want to play something like Ram Wrangler, right? <laughs> and just yeah. crush them. I guess that's one of the ways to deal with it. But um, I'm actually going to predict that we're not going to see too many hunters. That's a pretty, pretty awesome position, uh, prediction based mm -hmm. on the fact that you're living with one of the teams that is a... Uh playing right now, Team Archon, oh. of course. Right, right, right. I, I think there's going to be more Shamans than Hunters, let's put it that way. Yeah, I would also be shocked if we saw Hunters. I, I think there might be something there with the lock and load list, but the time has been so limited. As DGT has only been out for two days, and I would be really shocked if somebody was brave enough to bring a lock and load list so fast. It might be something we see down the road, maybe in a month, but right now, I find it's really unlikely. Mm -hmm. I think people are going for the more obvious combos with like the you know, Thunderbolt of Valiant with the Shaman and the Murloc Knight with the with the Paladin, you know. Just the more obvious ones seem yeah, to be with Thunder, the ones. With the Thunderbolt of Valiant, you can't really go wrong that much. The card, even <laughs> if you don't get the, an awesome synergy with it, the stat line is really solid at 3 and 6. If you play them turn 7, you throw them up afterwards. 
you get the buff immediately. It's just a, it's so safe. It's just a safe pick. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah, now, I want to remind you guys that we actually have two matches for today because this is the, this is the satellite bracket. We're going to play uh, pretty much like a double elimination bracket. Our mm -hmm. second match of the day will be Force and Boys versus Nilhum. But our first match will actually be uh, ri the rival Hearthstone teams of Archon and Tempo Storm. Amaz, I'm sure you have a, a lot to say about this rivalry. Uh, oh man, um, actually, it's also interesting to point out that Team Archon coming in a third place from Phase 1 actually get to choose the bracket. And, um, you know, I kind of tend to stay away from influencing them from choosing whatnot because, you know, they are the ones who are playing the games and, you know, they can form their own strategies and whatnot. But they're like, okay, let's just choose Temple Storm because they're the best matchup. <laughs> I mean, that's the best way to <laughs> phrase it, right? Um, of course, they kind of like, uh, for them, put it in a good way where they're kind of trying to fight for the glory of the team owners where, you know... Me and Raynad, maybe not the best of relationships, so hopefully, you know, we can uh, win the glory for us. It's kind of like a kind of like a tournament theme too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's yeah, that's pretty so, interesting. Uh, but neither one of you is playing right now, so you just have to put your faith in the in the guys and uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> hope for the best. It's gonna be it'll be, fun. It'll be yeah. interesting if see uh, if Temple Storm would have picked Archon um, as the matchup if they actually went third place. Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, it's I, I do think that Archon is probably one of the uh, the best teams in the league. I mean, mm -hmm. you know how like I collect stats all the time. Um, okay, of Ar course. Archon is the Archon is the only team that has a fifty five percent win rate among all three players uh, mm -hmm. over the course of Black Rock Mountain. So just statistically, if you just average all three players, Archon uh, will come out the best. Yeah, uh, our guys are pretty solid, so um, I have faith in them. But uh, yeah, Temple Storm has really good players too, so this is going to be an exciting match. Let alone this you know, new TGT meta that came out. And uh, you know, I think deck building, uh, experienced deck builders are definitely going to gain an edge. Um, and that's something we didn't see in Phase 1. I mean, it's just solid play for Phase 1, right? You already have like your typical list. So an extra factor is always nice. Yeah, I think uh, uh, both these teams are also known for deck building, so it's kind of interesting to see there. Um, mm -hmm. Like Raynad on Tempo Storm, obviously known for deck building. Hyped more known for Rogue deck building, even though Rogue probably isn't didn't get too many cool tools in TGT. Um, Gar known for like his Ramp Druid, and then we have Firebat, who's uh, very known for like uh, tinkering decks. Also known for Ramp Druid. Zelay uh, coming up with uh, a combo Warlock in the uh, first ESL tournament. So definitely everyone here has the potential to innovate. Yeah. <laughs> how, how many how many completely new decks will there be? Or will there be just tweaks? How how did the teams prepare for this? What are the different strategies? Like what strikes out to me first would be the kind of like divide it by classes and have each player maybe focus on one or two classes and try to do it like that. Two days is not much. You can do a bit of theory crafting beforehand because all the cards were known. But mm -hmm. theory crafting from my experience or my theory crafting maybe has been bad. But I couldn't nail any of the deck lists just like days before. I had to try out the cards, try out the synergies, what fits, what doesn't. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, I think the only lists that are not going to change too much are Handlock and Freeze, Freeze Mage. And everything else is going to be new. And I think because Mage. everybody's running these weird dragon decks and whatnot, aggro might make a, make a, might be very favorite. Like maybe aggro paladin, you know, the, um, the ones with leopard gnomes and whatnot. So we'll have yeah. to see. And the 3-mana Charger with Divine Shield design, I think it's a good fit in the Paladin. Potentially the new buff, I'm not sure if that is gonna, like the 3-mana plus 3 and Divine Shield buff. I think it's a cool card, I'm not sure if it will find it, its place, because there's already Blessing of Might, already Blessing of Kings. So can you fit it in? Maybe, but it's hard to tell, it requires some testing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Amaz, you mentioned that you think uh, Freeze Mage and Handlock will be the only decks that don't change too much. Now, what I'm really curious about is how many Patron Warriors will we see and how much that list actually changes. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't think the new cards actually help patients that much. I mean, you're not going to play the Border Fist Ogre to wear on your own board, right? Uh, so, uh, minimum one from Zelay. That's what I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. And a total of... Hmm... Actually, I would say a total of three. A total of three. Okay. That's what I'm guessing. I think somebody will, you know, step out of their comfort zone and try Dragon uh, Warrior, but uh, a minimum of one, definitely. 
Yeah, a lot yeah, of people have been having success with different types of warriors. But uh, the, uh, patrons, like, like you mentioned, there's not that many new cards that you can put in patrons. But on, from, uh, if you think about it from uh, another point of view, how many new cards are there that hurt patrons, that make the patrons weaker? There's very few. Personally, I was expecting to see uh, some more hate cards, maybe like something of something that isn't stats st stop charge or whatever. But th there's not that many, not that many cards that would counter patron. So, okay. uh, so. Patron is definitely still a solid pick, it's still a strong pick, but is there maybe something better, like this Varian Rune, does it make Control Warrior that little bit better than it used to be, to, to make, it a, make it a better pick overall than the Patrons? Tough yeah, we need a Hungry Crab for Patron, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I also feel that... a lot of those. Yeah, yeah. I feel like so, some of the new decks actually like are really bad against Patrons, like the new Paladin list, the new uh, Shaman list. Even though they got some like strong buffs, they still have a lot of really weak creatures that are susceptible to patron warrior. So we'll mm -hmm. see right there and then. Um, I believe we're ready to just like go in, almost ready to go into the first match. But before we do, we have a short video to show you guys. He was uh, pretty focused. Yeah. Attacking to something might matter. And turns out he just wants to go face and is that Oh my oh. god, the blowout. Oh, so dead. well. He played it. Yeah. We saw no win condition for him, any him anymore. And he missed. He's like out of steam. And he has Hellfire, Hellfire, heal both next turn. Oh, don't Wow. Oh. oh my god, the top decks are real. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that RD. This is a silly day. Yeah. This is crazy. So this is just, I don't know. Like, can we get can we get like Shia LaBeouf on a green screen saying that and front? Whoa. Oh, there it is! There's there the reaction. Yeah. Play right. That could actually. Oh, so he's he's hoping for the concede. He's agonizing Trump. Well played. Well played. Yeah, like you are. That's it. And Yara's gonna concede it, and Value Triple down bench. goes for the crazy reverse sweep. Alex has to die. No way. We already saw one Doomsayer today. <laughs> not possible. Okay. Oh my god! They're not. It's just barely short, right? Oh my gosh. <gasps> oh my what? god. Bro, it's this gotta is be hot oh, no matter what. The thing is, if the Doom Guard oh, comes out, you're forcing Shadow of Death, in which case Cabal is a bit less. Which is fine. You have to miss one exactly. damage. You're gonna trade it abusive first, but he's trading anyway. Yeah, you got it. Actually, no, he healed a minion, so if it hit for six. Ooh! Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, he's one off. One <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, and that one miss damage actually helped cost him the game. Yeah. Definitely some pretty good moments there, we can see in the past few weeks. Unfortunately, uh, Liquid was eliminated in the <laughs> past week. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, me and Savits. Yeah. Um, it's not bad. I'm happy to be casting here. I'm going to be casting some exciting games. I'm going to be watching some exciting games. There's a lot of pressure for deck building, but I would be lying if I, if I didn't feel bad. I mean, $250,000. Yeah, feels bad, man. Yep. Okay, here's the lineups. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, before we get into this uh, exciting match, we have to thank our sponsors a bit, quite a bit. Um, AlphaDraft.com, where you can draft your own Archon Team League fantasy team, and also the Amazon App Store, where um, they're doing a promotion right now, so you can enter for a fifty percent chance to win some uh, to win. 
fifty percent off to win forty <laughs> Hearthstone packs. Oh man, and I, they're pretty cool because uh, chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amaz, it's fifty percent chance if you enter, right? It's fifty percent chance. You either win or you lose, right? Or you don't lose. Exactly. You just don't win. Everybody's a winner, right? Yeah. Well, I've been getting all my Hearthstone packs from the Amazon App Store, so definitely a good place to check out. Mm -hmm, indeed. All right. Well, looking at the lineups here, uh, it seems like that uh, we only see priest on one side. Uh, Gar is playing priest, and actually no shamans. Oh man. Uh, so so far, I guess I've been wrong from my prediction. Uh -huh. uh, why do you think the shaman is not represented? Uh, I think uh, maybe there wasn't enough time to prepare the deck list and uh, figure out the right list. I I've seen some players try it out with Strife, but he was having decent success with it. But uh, I think the main issue is not that the uh, Shaman would be bad, but it's it's just the preparation time. Um, two days not enough to get the list right. It, it, it's a kind of a completely new archetype with the totems. You can try to feed it in, into some old, uh, like add some new cards to the old mid-range Shaman, but I think with those all those totems, you gotta go for the totem team, and uh, yeah, it's it's something that we will see in in a future weeks. Okay, yeah, certainly something to keep an eye uh, an eye out for, I guess. Uh, both players are bringing paladin, uh, so we definitely expect to see some new cards there. And uh, what else do we have? Druids for both players, and Jin Druids really strong. Warriors as well. Uh, only one mage from the Archon. And uh, yeah, no hunters from Archon as well. So yeah, just one hunter from Gaia. Yeah, all the other eight classes are represented here. Four classes are overlapping, and uh, Team Archon with the Rogue and Mage for Firebat, mm -hmm. and Tempestorm going with the Hunter and Priest. I can't wait to see Gaia's decklist. He's known to be a be a unique deck builder already, and uh, now with the new expansion, <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, we'll see. Uh, first match is going to start with uh, six to one druid and hyped on warrior. Uh, hyped has been playing a lot of control warrior in phase one, right? Uh, I think he mostly played um, he mostly played patron warrior, but he has like sprinkled in some control warrior here and there, especially mm -hmm. in the first two weeks where he lost, uh, where his team eventually lost. I think after Kaldi was recruited as the analyst for the team, they began focusing more on Patron Warrior. Okay. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, against our team, against Team Liquid, uh, the Hype did play Control Warrior. But it seems that he's going with the Patron now. You see yeah. the Morrison Commander already in the starting hand. Alright guys, guess... are you ready for your uh, first official TGT match with brand new specking decks? Uh, yeah, let's do remind viewers that TGT is out, <laughs> and we, haven't, we don't see any TGT cards so far. There's a Dread Corsair though, um, we haven't seen that in a while. Um, so that's TGT the, card. <laughs> new Pirate, oh my god. This is a bit disappointing, I wanted to see like, so many new cards! The hype yeah. is real, TGT out! And then we got this for the first game. Oh well, it's going better. <laughs> hey, we might actually see a uh, Pirate Warrior? I mean, one can only hope, right? Yeah, <laughs> only seen okay. five cards so far. Mm -hmm. Well, it's definitely a possibility. I mean, uh, the druid, the new druid list, definitely. Uh, ooh, it's not five five yet or five six. Oh no, yeah. they're making us relive oh, our loss. No. What is happening? We need to update oh. those overlays. <laughs> Uh, we'll do well, that soon, hopefully. That's alright. Well, I think uh, the, the new Druid list, well, there have been, first of all, new Druid lists coming out. Um, Amaz, I know you're a fan of the uh, um, Amnesiac or Amnesia Druid list yeah. that has, it's like really low curving. It has, uh, it doesn't have any three drops, it has four, four drops, and basically it allows you to curve from um, the, the new two, three that came out in Druid into a four drop really effectively. Yeah, I mean the it just makes the deck so much more consistent, right? Uh, because you're running so many uh, wild growths and in, innervates as well that you can actually fit like how many four drops is in the, that deck? It's actually like close to eight, right? You got shredders, you got yetis, you got keepers, and uh, I think you have something else, but oh, maybe, maybe not. But Swipes. anyways, we're looking yeah. at this match, and it seems like um, Six is going to start with Emperor turn, and that's going to be amazing. Don't read, don't read Emperor. Not only that, but the Warrior actually has no way to kill that right now. He needs the top deck of card to kill. Oh! Oh! There we go. That I was thought... very, very important. <laughs> yeah, and Emperor living for two turns for um, a Druid is just like, yeah, that's just it, right? Yeah, I mean, if that, if that wasn't dealt with, there would be another five mana from it. Ooh, yet another innervate. You just yeah. saw one execute being used, so why not just throw out Dr. Boom? 
All right, well, there you go. Um, so is this like, is this still like super ahead now and uh, Hype really has no way to come back? Or can he find something here? Six are definitely way ahead. This is going to be a rough match, but uh, but it's not over yet. It's possible that Druid whips on the draws and now starts drawing, like, let's say, Wild Crowd after Wild Crowd. And the, the minions won't be enough. Mm. He would have to basically... He basically have to draw exactly that, though. Mm. I mean, turn like, three the, Emperor, turn four Doctor Boom. <laughs> How do you deal with that? Oh man, uh, I guess Hype's hand is also really, really bad. So he has to find some more card draw to, you know, serve and, and survive at the same time, which is looking like a very no. hard task to do. What about you this? You can't clear this. That, that's fight and uh, and the whirlwind combined with the cruel Taskmaster is a full clear. Yeah, you can also use one whirlwind here. Just uh. Save the inner rage, I guess. Yeah. And he can even drop the Corsair afterwards. Not too bad, I guess. Oh! 15 to face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man! <laughs> Doctor, <laughs> Doctor Boom was one and a half Pyro Blast right there. Oh, my God. Well, there you go. Oh, that's the wild draw that I was talking about. Not a good draw at this point. Yeah, but I mean, at that's, this... Mm -hmm. Like, right now, you're, you're so far ahead, you can just, like... Keep on getting the board, and any card you draw is probably good. I mean, you want to dodge those innervates, and what maybe if Six is playing Darnassus Aspirant, you don't want to draw that either. I think all the spells are actually bad, but well, not not Force of Nature. That's that's gonna eventually let him kill. But if he if he rots here and Druid of the Claws, Druid of the Claw gets dealt with. There's, there's a lot of bad draws. Yeah, any spell is bad. Is bad. Okay. I think we also have to consider like what kind of list that 6 is running. If he's running one of the newer lists that is more optimized for Whoa. ladder, this might not be as good. Oh, that's a perfect draw oh, right man. there. This that is not over. Well, actually, it's just turned, um, you know, was it 180? It's just, it's just a big swing on the other side now. How does 6 deal with this board now? Oh, this is incredible. Oh what a God. huge stop play. That was exactly the card that he needed. Not only did he need it, but he needed it right now. One turn later, probably too late already. Well, six three threes are a lot of three threes. Oh, does double swipe actually clear the board later? You can actually, like, hero power something right now, right? And then set up for the double swipe later? Or does it work that way? Mm. No, some of the, like, the one, the one HP ones are gonna die first and then the. Uh, yeah, I don't, don't think it no. works. Well, oh. actually, if you... Oh, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, the 1 HP are going to die first. I think at this point, 6 so there's, there's like no way you clear these patrons off in this game, so you might have to just go for some kind of face play. Oh, just swipe the face? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, swipe the face, wild, gro uh, wild growth, and then you draw Force of Nature and win the game, right? Yeah, that's yeah. pretty simple. It's... it's it sounds ridiculous, but I think it's, <laughs> it might just be the best play. Yeah, I think it's correct. He has to go for it. I mean, there's no way he can clear those plates from here. There's, there's no option, surely. All right. Well, you have 18 damage coming to next turn, so that's 36 damage over two turns. Yeah, that's probably the only play. See if uh, Sixus is going to go for that lion. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, he's going to hero part instead? Oh, man. What if he draws a uh, force of nature? Oh man. Okay, there has to be some. He's going to. Okay, so. Uh, mm. I, don't, I actually don't understand this. Yeah, this seems. Uh, one one attack there is kind of negligible. Is there anything that deals four damage? There is. Oh, there right. is nothing that he can draw though for the lethal. Yeah. After the armor up, I mean. Right. Oh, right, what if he top this? No, he top this. Draw the claw. He can't. It's just armor up. Yeah, exactly. So, hmm, might get punished there. Yeah, if the, if the top deck card is a force of nature, that's going to be pretty devastating. This, yeah. But if, if it's not, I guess it won't matter. I, I, I have no idea why he would hero over there. There has to be some kind of like thought behind that, but I, can, I just don't see it. Maybe it's just a... Uh, maybe he didn't think about the that. Only, the only thing I can think of is if he top decks the roots, and then, oh, the and, living and then, roots? Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, living roots and hype doesn't armor up, but that would be like kind of ridiculous <laughs> that you don't armor up in that situation. Oh, yeah, exactly. All right, so here we don't technically die. We can swipe off the uh, frogging. Mm 
But uh, we are kind of close to dying here. Oh, and he still has the chance to draw the um, Force of Nature next turn. That's true, but uh, over at Hype's side, he's actually 2 damage off lethal. One, uh, 3 damage if 6 uses Hero Power this turn. Mm -hmm. So any weapon would do it. Uh, Dread Corsair, if he plays another one. Right. Inner Rage. There's a lot of outs. There's a lot of, yeah, any whirlwind epic, anything to split that last remaining 3-2 patron, basically would, would do it. A any spell that deals 1 damage. Mm -hmm. Is this it? Or weapon, or... This, they go more than uh, half. Oh yep. yeah, there you go. Inner Rage is going to do it. That's a deal for I don't deck. feel like I want to call it a top deck because it's like truth build. I think like two thirds of his deck was lethal. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Something like Acolyte or Armorsmith might not have been. But, uh, yeah, I yeah, just get to the that's first game. Yeah, so I uh, just want to point out that first game did not include a single TGT card. <laughs> <laughs> not a single one. Oh, man. Hmm. <sighs> oh. Well, uh, hey, well, at least we don't have to see Patron Warrior again, right? That's, uh, no, that's, that's true. Awesome. We got it out of the way, straight away. I'm happy right. about it. Yeah. We yeah, probably have to see one more game, actually, when Zelay plays it. But uh, yeah. after that, it sh we should be all TUT from then on. Zelay playing, play playing Patron Warrior, unheard of. Yeah. It's he never experience. plays that deck. Exactly. <laughs> well, Tempo Storm off to a pretty good start. Um, getting one point on the board. And now, of course, players will have to change, uh, you know, choose new players or the same, it's the same. But of course, if Sixo goes again and he loses, then he's going to be benched and it's going to be, you know, quite hard to navigate from there when your opponent knows that you're gonna not going to bring two specific decks to the next match. Yeah, for sure. I, I would be shocked if they send Sixo again. There might be some mind games going into it. So if Tempostrom thinks that Sixo won't go again, they might pick the decks that the that are, uh, are bad against Xixos decks, maybe. But if if the, if the Markon tries to like uh, like uh, counter that, yeah, Xixos again. But uh, there's so many decks open. Uh, I think it's better to just have somebody else else go. Hmm. Yeah, any, anything, so, else, anything should work. Yeah, I feel like uh, just Archon in general, they they generally use a fairly similar lineup each week with. Firebat playing the Warlock instead of Rogue, and Sixo playing Rogue instead of the um, the Paladin or Druid. So it seems yeah. like Sixo got like the new decks, and everyone, all the other decks were like pushed out of the way to make uh, up for these new decks. So I think the Paladin is definitely going to be something special, um, and it's definitely going to be, or probably going to be at least the the mid range version instead of like the old aggro version that everyone has been using in the previous weeks of Archon Team League. So I probably would want to see that deck. I'm really interested in the Rogue. What do you guys think? Because uh, for, for me and I, from what I've heard from some other people, the Rogue might be the big loser of TGD. There weren't that <laughs> many exciting new cards and the, the Pirate Junior that was introduced. How, how strong is it really? Uh, oh. Well, I played oh. Burgle against Trump the other day, and I got... Uh, we're going to see it now, yeah? Firebat's going to play Rogue. But I played Burgle against Trump the other day, uh, his Tempo Mage, and I got Flame Waker and Effigy, and that was pretty insane. I think Burgle might just be a better um, sprint, because you can always prep Burgle, and that's, like, free. So, um, I'm, I'm going to give it high hopes that that's going to be that's a good interesting. Sure. Yeah. yeah, but it's two yeah. cards for two cards. Like it doesn't really get you anywhere except that you start yeah. some combos, and it's so unreliable. I don't no, know. I, I, just, I mean, mm. the thing is, like, um, class cards actually counter their own class, right? We got like sacrificial pacts, uh, druids. We got like naturalize and mulch and stuff like that. You know, I think it's actually yeah. pretty good if you look at it that way. And you're not getting any yeah. neutrals, right? You're not getting any wisps and stuff like that. But yeah. Isn't That's, like strictly uh, worse than uh, than thought steel is because. Uh, with Thought Steel, you get playable cards. You get two playable cards, but with uh, well, with, actually, uh, with Oracle, you might get the unplayable ones, like an eye for an eye. Well, not quite, right? Because Thought Steel, sometimes you do get unplayable cards when you play against like Deadly Poison as a priest and stuff like that. And then if Totenum Mike starts seeing play in like the Totem Shaman, then actually <laughs> that's a playable card too. And um, I think the main draw is that you actually are ha having only class cards you also include their class spells. And a lot of people don't include their spells, right? So for example, um, an aggro paladin might not run Consecrate. 
and you can never thought steal a consecrate from an aggro paladin, right? And you can actually do that with Virgo. So that's, that's kind true. of different. Yeah. Yeah, against like Shaman, for example, with the new. Well, the Overlord is pretty hurting, but with the new AoE, AoE in general is good against Shaman, so now there's about Lightning Storm and that that you can still. So, I, I guess it can, but this is so, so much RNG, Ooh. a little bit too much for my taste. Ooh, here we go! DGD is out, confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have one golden and one non golden, so you can keep track of which one you drew, right? <laughs> I used I used to do that when I'm testing a card with like whether I should run one or two. Okay. Like when I was experimenting with the double doom hammers the first time, I was playing with one gold and one regular one. I was tracking the golden one because I knew that the regular one that okay that one belongs there for sure. So I wanted to see like how how well the other one performs. Okay, that's one way to actually test it out, which is pretty cool. Firebat rocking the Hearthstone Cup, pretty awesome. Oh yeah. No, it looked like he wi replaced the wild trot based on the over, uh, or like the graphics, but I'm sure he kept it absolutely yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Sure that he kept. <laughs> no way you don't keep that. No, and, no way uh, you, play, you don't keep it. <laughs> and hey, it seems like Hype is still playing Shade. It's going to be pretty strong. Uh, so Hype is going to have a turn 3 play with the coin while growth. Yeah, yeah this, is, solid this is kind of a. Yeah, this is kind of exactly the type of deck I would expect from Hyped. Uh, back when GVG first came out, he played some mech druid even. So he definitely has been like he pretty much only plays specific classes like the the rogue, the druid, the mage, the warrior. Mm -hmm. um, but within those classes, he likes to innovate quite a bit. He likes to experiment. Not sure enough. Wow, innovate. That's gonna yeah. allow some extra combos down. But it seems like a very very juicy keeper of the grove here. It is, but well, he could also play the combat and then innervate the hero power. I mean, th that way he would get a stronger minion on the board. So, oh yeah, that's actually yeah, really, really sick. Because like, you turn a hero power through attack, and your opponent usually plays like what, Farseers and SIs. So that could be something. Uh, exactly, and then... Hmm. Keeper might you also be kind of, Yeah, you, you <laughs> also kind of force your opponent to clear off the Savage Combatant if you play it. Because it's always going to be a threat. Hmm. True. But there might be some easy ways to deal with it. And the keeper is against the rogue. The keeper value is not that high. Keeper is a card that sometimes you don't want to play and play like this. You want to save the silence for something in particular. But against rogue, you you don't really need to save it. So it, it seems like it's a, it's the perfect card here. But yeah. yeah. Oh wow. So hype is actually gonna said, go over that. Yeah, it's it's more powerful at this point, and it's gonna pay off. We don't know exactly what's in Hype's deck, so if there's no, let's say, a powerful 7 drop that he wants to try innervate on maybe turn 5, then uh, this makes a lot of sense. Well, is it actually going to pay off? Because Firebat actually has a um, the prep sap play with the Vile T-shirt. That seems actually pretty powerful. And I don't think prepping, uh, sapping a Keeper of the Grove is that good, right? So, I'm not sure if that was the best. No, you, you're actually right, yeah. But I... Uh, I could also have uh, like a way to deal with it, but it's not that efficient, he needs to unstall the shade. Well yeah. yeah, I mean if you use the keeper, you actually save and innovate for later as well. So in this sense, that Firebat kind of yeah, killed hype's uh, innovate as well. Like, oh like for this, for example. Yeah, that's exactly what I that's that's the what I was thinking about saving the innervate. But mm -hmm. uh yeah. So in the end he actually got a little bit punished for it. Yep, in the end. So now the keeper is kind of like you know, pretty dead, I think. Like, when are you going to play it? Are you going to play it now? Mm. I don't know, this is a painful board for a tree. Probably has to, like, uh, take the shade out of stealth, but it's not going to get, like, zero value then. Mm -hmm. There's no way you're going to leave it the each drop. Well, Firebat's hand is not looking too insane either. Um, can nope. imagine maybe just equipping the Assassin's Blade this turn. I think so, and then he can trade the one once for those uh, those minions. Playing the play it later on might be difficult. I like, know he has a uh, like a decent time to play it, so why not take it? Mm. Also, I want to note that Firebat is playing like the more Mister Yugut version of the Rogue, whereas before he's playing more of the the standard version that players like Dog likes to use. And I think it's because Sixo has been playing the Mister Yugut version so much, and you can definitely see. Um, his, uh, Firebat's teammates influencing him in his decision as to what deck to bring. Alright, well, that's a fair assessment. 
I mean, I should go with the tempo play more so than the assassin's play. But assassin's oh, play is pretty man. tempo. But um, yeah, it's gonna oh, actually man. get wrecked by the savage combatant there. <laughs> <laughs> that is the perfect savage combatant. Yeah. So this guy is actually good. I might have undervalued it because I mean I was looking at them like, no, Shredder is too good. I, mean, I I would never play this unless it's like a strictly a beast synergy deck with of some sort. But there's no beast synergy to be seen on a. That, that was a really good, a good turn with it. Yeah, I think it's yeah. actually interesting because uh, I, when I first saw the card, I was like, it's a must pick in arena, right? But like, further like calculating it, it actually doesn't lose to Shredder because if you play first and your opponent plays Shredder, you can actually hear power down to Shredder, right? So it doesn't right. strictly die to Shredder. Yeah, if you have yeah. the inner weight or the like the extra mana, that, that is true. Yeah, but yeah that, it's not a, only that. Stuff. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I, I want to say it's worse stats. It kills Belcher too, right? Like, it's yeah. interesting. It's not a strictly worse card than Shredder, I would say. Yeah. Well, not nah. only that, pretty much all these Druid lists these days, they run the four, like... I think we oh. lost Monk. No, we lost Monk. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's not a first, but... Um, well, we'll have to just imagine what, um, what he is trying to say. But here, uh, what, do you, what would you play, Savish? Would you play Ancient of Lore or would you play Emperor? Uh, I think the Lotep is an option too. He, can, he could hit for 10 and uh, next turn he's, he's guaranteed to get another. I, I, I would play the Lotep. Okay. Yeah, it's actually it's kind of weird cool, that so. um, Firebat actually hit the 1-1 one, one onto the, uh, onto the uh, Savage Combatant, right? So mm -hmm. This just pushes way more damage. Also, yeah. also you got the Hero Pyre. Right, exactly. Yeah, and uh, with that roar in hand and the uh, low tap effect working, um, if there's no uh, played flurry, I think it would be dead. Mm -hmm. But there is the flurry, so oh, do you go face? I, I would consider doing the low tap. Maybe he figures that he wants to use the as I effect on the low tap next. Uh, okay. Well, there you go. Blade flurry is gonna come down, and man, this low tap is gonna. <laughs> Do a lot of damage and the oh the cobble is already what? in the hand, so it's looking pretty good for hype here. Just gonna heal himself, I believe, because you have all the cards necessary to win. I mean I wouldn't have blamed him for just going for a game better hero power there to put him down to 14 because with four cards in the rogues hand, I just don't see the little really happening with eight mana, no weapon equipped yet, but uh, yeah, that's gonna be it. Alright, and yeah, uh, Hype is gonna take the smash for Temple Storm, and they are 2-0. Oh, baby. Yeah. Very good start. Not the best of start for Archon. No, not, not at all. With Temple Storm, we're off to a great start. Yeah. That rogue didn't. That, it fell out a little bit flat here. Yeah. But they drew, to be unfair, the Druid starting hand was quite amazing. We're going coin, coin wild, growth into shade, into four drop. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, and to be fair, uh, I think like Druid typically, it just statistically, it has a, a edge in this matchup with a uh, 56 to 36 uh, win rate. That's about 61%. And Druid got, I feel like Druid got more buffs in this expansion than Rogue did. You saw the Rogue pretty much, again, it had no TGT cards, while the Druid at least had something, This, especially the Savage Combatant, which actually put it in a lot of work. Yeah. Well, here you go, guys. TUT cards are actually good. You actually do want to play them to give an edge. I want to see more. <laughs> yeah, more and more and more, more different. I think it's also a thing where because there is so much on the line that uh, players might be like, ah, oh, they want to kind of play it on the safe side. But sometimes safe might not be the best way. You kind of have to just, you can either win or you can either lose, right? There's no in between where yeah. if you win a couple of games, okay, you can have some compensation or whatnot. So, um,. We'll see if um we'll see if there are other decks that are more creative, I guess. Yeah, it's it's uh the the format is really punishing if you bring a new deck which falls flat. Like you can actually go zero and six with a deck in this, so Oh yeah, that's it's, true. It's, it's scary it's really scary to bring something completely fresh. Yeah. Yeah. And well, the, I feel like for the day. That's uh that's insane. Yeah. You can cheer on his teammates. But I do feel like that's probably one of the reasons people aren't bringing Shaman to the to like the foray. Mm -hmm. It's that Shaman, like it's you see a lot of it on ladder, but there hasn't really been a list that like is just super blow your mind amazing, right? And I've heard a lot of people say that maybe the new Paladin lists are just better than the Shaman list. They they both play very similarly, 
but the upgrades of like the the Murloc, the new Murloc card from the Paladin, in addition to just like the standard good cards from Paladin, like Muster for Battle and Shielded Minibot, might just be better than all the upgrades that Shaman got. Yeah, you would imagine that Totem Golem should be pushing the edge um, over Shaman, but I think one of the main problems with Totem Golem is not the card itself now, is that if you don't draw Totem Golem early on, you're just hero powering, and then Shamans just can't really skip, you know, early turns, right? They need to, yeah. like, put stuff early on, and then support that with, like, you know, Tuskar to Temek, uh, you know, Thunderbolt Faliant, maybe even Fire Elemental. So the early start is just too important for Shamans to do. No, absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, it's a little bit weird, got it. Obvi obviously, it's, uh, it's great, but personally, uh, it... Uh, hasn't I, I think that it hasn't been that amazing. It's a great card, but uh, it, it does also mess up the mana a little bit when you go for the Overlord. When you play it on turn two, your turn three is quite often just going to be hero power. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I definitely see where you're coming. When the card was first announced, I thought it would just be completely revolutionizing Shaman, but it's more the fact that it's kind of cost three mana with the Overload effect. And if you're just playing it like a 3 4 for 3 mana, it's not that good. It's just mainly good for tempo, but if you draw it on a later turn, like let's say like turn 8, you're kind of paying 3 mana for a 3 4, and that's just like average to below average, I would say. Yeah, that's exactly what I... Uh, I, I didn't rate Totem Golem in my top 10 cards. <laughs> I'm still going to stick with it. Uh, it's been pretty mm. insane, the games I played against it. Uh, if you're not, say, a Temple Mage with Flame Cannon, like, a perfect answer. But overall, it's... I mean, it's good. I still wouldn't say it's a top 10 card. Yeah. I think, uh... I just think, like, Shielded Minibot is better, for example. Mm, much more versatile. Yeah. Probably. The yeah, Shielded Minibot is so good, though. There's not many, uh, many better 2 drops in the game. It might even be the best one. Well, here's a new matchup. Uh, Zalei's gonna use uh, Warrior, and Gara is gonna respond with a Hunter. So yeah. patron versus hopefully a Ram Wrangler deck or maybe a lock and load deck, but uh, according to Savish, well, we probably might not see one this early on. Yeah, it's unlikely to see any lock and load, but it's Gara, so who knows? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah, Gara is certainly known for bringing his own flair to tournaments, but because he's in a playing in a team league, I think he's less likely to. Um, innovate as much because he is not only playing for himself but for the team as well. And oh, he would feel, yeah, he would feel so bad if he lost 06 with his new creation. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you gotta go with your gut feelings here, right? You know that this deck is actually really, really good. It, um, I think if you bring a new creation to a format like this and your opponent doesn't know what's happening, then yes. you can actually surprise them and like get a win immediately and they can't face it again. So I think that's a very big plus. And there you go, bear trap. For Gara. Well, wow. th that's that's our third TGT card of the day. Wow. And two of the previous ones were the same. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> no, no, no. What, one was regular, the other was golden. Okay, okay. So they are kind of different. And of course, Patron Warrior did not receive any love from TGT. Obviously, we do not need a Grimmer Patron. A 5 5 to summon another 5 5. <laughs> Grimmer Patron. Uh, oh, man. That would be terrible. Grimace Patron, a 7-7 seven, seven that summons a 7-7. Seven, seven. No, that card is terrible. It gets BGH'd. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe like a, a Grim Frothing Berserker. You get more Frothing Berserkers when they're... <laughs> oh, no. The Let's Frothing is there. Berserker. We might Froth see that in a Tavern Brawl, right? That, that might happen. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Mm. Can't wait for that one. Well, right. I guess the, the Frothing Berserker, the upgrade of that would be Frothing Berserkist. Right. <laughs> Good, good, Monk. Good. Very nice. A very slow start for Gara, unfortunately, for him. Uh, skip the uh, turn one drop. Usually you want to see a web spinner if he's playing the mid range hunter. So Soleil is gonna. Oh, immediately drop down the frothing. How do we like that move? Uh, it seems like, uh, like it's okay because of the double frothings in his hand. I mean, he could have just went with uh, the with, uh, ghoul, I suppose. Yeah, I, I feel know. like that pool was kind of like the replay. Like, coin is kind of important as well in Patreon, but then I guess Salay's kind of like the expert here. Yeah, definitely because of the double frothing. If he only had one frothing, I can't imagine he would have ever done this. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. well. 
That looks like a an easy Valvin cruel taskmaster to me. Okay. Right. Yeah. Bob the that spider. seems really good. I was about to say that guard drawing the uh, Westerner was very very key because now the Hellmaster has that much like basically double chance of mm -hmm. activating it. But uh, yeah, so they just wants to clear the board here. You're against the hunter, right? The later game yeah. it goes, the more the the more likely it is for you to win. Oh man, throwing is actually getting huge. Mm -hmm. So that's why he played the frothing on turn Okay, alright, there you go. <laughs> well done. Well, really not nice. only that. Yeah. yeah, it's actually gonna pop the trap, and the frothing is at 10 attacks, so... This is looking pretty good for Zule. Is it bear trap? Yes, it is oh, bear it trap. Is yeah. Oh, ho, ho, that was painful! Hmm. Pyroplast! Oh, man. <laughs> Alright, so can you actually get any tells from Gar hitting the um Frothing Berserker with the um with the bow? Yeah, I because if so. Yeah, if it were uh, a freezing trap, which is the obvious trap, I'd like you would hit the cruel taskmaster all the time. I've okay. never seen that play before DGT, so you can you have to figure out it's the new trap because with the old traps nobody would do that play. <laughs> nobody would take ten to the face. No, no, there's, there's no way. Like if it's a freezing, you kill the other one. If it's explosive, you go face. All right. Yeah, I but mean, it uh, makes sense to do it with uh, with snakes. Maybe with snakes. Nice. Zelay might be thinking, are these mind games or like is, is guard did that so quickly? So he seems so sure of himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's actually sure. He's actually not trying to do mind games. I guess. Though that was a perfect draw here. Turn five. Oh yeah, very good. All right, so, so it's a bear trap. How do you deal with it the best? You really want a weapon to deal with it the best, but they just aren't coming to delay. And delay is uh, his patron warriors, um, or his patron decks typically run two fire war axes. So that's four weapons that he has the chance to draw, but he just hasn't drawn them yet. Right. This is actually pretty sick. How it is actually a bear trap? Because now it's forcing um, Zelay to actually trade into this Lothab. Yeah. No, no, he knows for sure what which one it is. If, if there was any question about it, now mm -hmm. now he knows. And also, let's not forget that the bear trap actually is a trap, so it will buff the eagle horn bow. Oh yeah, that, that is important. Yeah, I'd almost forgotten about that because in the tavern brawl last week there were no eagle horn bows, but there were bear traps. Right. Definitely quite a difficult turn. Oh. Yeah. Probably throwing away one of the war songs here. The second one doesn't seem very valuable. Oh, even the cool one. Alright. So it's bear trap for sure. I mean, yeah. all the other traps we test. I, I guess it could be explosive. Yeah. They're kind of similar. Oh, it's two! Alright. Oh, that's true. He actually has not tested for explosives, but uh, he knows that it's not explosives based on the bow attack on the 2 HP frothing to take them to face. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah, so problem solving basically says that it's not explosive. That yeah. Makes sense. How sick of a bluff would it be if it were explosive, though? Wait, that, what? No! <laughs> they extend oh, the face for no reason. <laughs> that's the best ever. Oh, man. Alright, Adam Companion. Oh, there you go. Oh, it's Misha. oh, look, the bear came out. Bear did come out after all. Mm -hmm. Alright. Oh, that's the perfect card. Came a little bit too slow, but I think it's really good. You actually have the Battle Rage to actually back that up. Very yep, sweet. definitely needs more cards. Yeah. I'm kind of glad that Nimsh isn't casting because I couldn't bear his jokes about this. Oh. <laughs> that was happening sometimes during this cast, definitely, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, this is a pretty good turn for Gar as well. He put a lot of power on the board. And uh, right back to Zelay. Haunter Creeper was played after the Despite, so the Despite Whirlwind is not going to kill the 1 1 spiders that come out. Yeah, but this seems, seems like a really. Uh... Really nice turn here with the acolyte and the cruel dust master. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can use the acolyte on the spider and the cruel dust master. Can, you can use the effect from the cruel dust master to clear the last spider. Maybe run the cruel task into the 
the hound monster. It's, it's really a clean, clean board clear here. Nice. Wow, another battle rage too. More card draw. And it also seems like that Zalei is actually not running uh, Armorsmith because uh, we see that Taskmasters are in the list. You know, usually you don't see Taskmasters, right? Usually it's either Taskmaster or, or, or Armorsmith. So Zalei actually needs to kill Gar for a win condition and not just armor up to like, you know, millions of armor. Yeah, I, I kind of want to see the Cruel Dust myself. I'm one of the Haunted Creepers and not, not the Acolyte. Because Acolyte is going to be drawing the maximum amount of guards anyway. Right, that makes sense. Okay, we need yours to do it. Oh, there we go! <laughs> and there's a whirlwind as well! Wow! At this point, Zalei has everything he needs. Oh, Hunter Smug is everything you do not need. Yeah, and second bear trap doing absolutely nothing. So, is this a problem with the bear trap? Is that if your opponent never goes face, it actually does nothing? Well, if, yeah, I mean, usually you win if your opponent never goes face, but. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it seems pretty bad here, I'm gonna be honest. I think it's it's the fact that Gar is playing a combo deck and a combo deck doesn't necessarily need to like consistently go face. They just need to go off once. They can like kinda stall the game, clear the board, and then when they're ready they can go face and easily deal with the bear trap. I've never seen the bear trap in play before. I haven't even seen it on a ladder. And uh this is not enough games to be calling it bad just yet, but uh it, it has been it has been very bad in this game. Yeah, certainly doesn't seem too good at this current predicament. Yeah. Oh man, but I, I guess it's kind of the problem with all the traps. All the traps are sometimes bad. You throw the wrong one. Mm -hmm. Freezing is probably the most consistent one. Yeah. At the end of the day, sap, and sap is just still the best. Yeah. So, uh, is this uh, lead? Oh. Alright, well... Mm, not even so, I guess if you don't know what is happening with the traps, then you kind of have to like play a bit safe. I think Execute uh -huh. is going to be played here to save some health. Fair enough. Yeah, and I, see, seems... I feel like there might have been some kind of... Um, maybe not, maybe there's no lethal. Like Warsong, uh, Patron, Death Spite, overwrite the Death Spite with the Fire Warrocks. Yeah, maybe, right, but then... There's not enough mana for everything. It, I mean, even if it is, it's so complicated. Why not just wait a turn for the Emperor to proc yeah. so now you can play your whole hand next turn? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is so safe. There's no. There's no <laughs> wow, Gar does, does not want to play anymore. This is just like. Uh, it's just too gross. Yeah. Yep. And uh, Zalei gets a win and puts Archon on the board. Yeah, those patrons, man. Zalei, one of the best uh, best patron players, in my, my opinion, in the world. And uh, they can really convincing win over the better traps. That, yeah, that, someone... that, uh, that, uh, I, I'm interested to see if there's any more new cards. Maybe he's playing the... Uh, what's it called? Ram Wrangler, right? Yeah, Ram that Wrangler. Oh, <laughs> that's a cool way you said it. You um, <laughs> you rolled your cheese. That was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> okay. it, yeah it definitely makes sense in that kind of deck. And uh, as you mentioned, Savitz, Zalei, he is a very good patron player. And I think someone like posted on Reddit, they... Uh, like took all the games from player streams and they took win percentages and Zalei did indeed have the highest win percentage playing Patron Warrior on stream. Well, there you go. TT is out and the first tournament Patron is a hundred percent win rate. Oh man, Sick. that's pretty depressing. <laughs> <laughs> that's not well, maybe it's just like the matchups, I guess. Maybe the counter to Patron is not found yet. Let's put it that way. That must yeah. sound a little bit. Yeah, I mean um Patron versus mid-range hunter. Previously, it was favored towards patron. It was a uh, fifty-two to forty-three, so that's fifty-five percent. And I don't think the bear traps are enough to like swing that matchup <laughs> around. It might even hurt the matchup, to be honest. Okay, I see. Hey, hey, monk. Why do your numbers never add up to hundred percent? Is it because of the tie? Wait, no. It's no. It's the games one. So fifty-two oh, to games one. Okay, okay, yeah. that's why. <laughs> All right. Interesting. Interesting. Can't wait to see more decks from uh, from Archon. Because like so far we've seen three decks from Archon, and we haven't seen a single DGD card. Out of all the teams, I thought Archon might be the 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 most likely team to bring out new cards. Because uh, there's so many great deck builders. So there's, it's also a really large team with uh, with yeah. uh, with a uh, purple trunk and, uh, and and the others also helping helping out with the decks. But uh, yeah, an orange, oh. right? But okay, yeah, um, orange. I can confirm that. 
the players are paid pretty well, so they do have money to buy TGD packs. Okay, let's just get that out of the way. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, whether they did buy TGD packs or not remains the question. But I <laughs> did see... Well, I mean, Firebat is delayed at least. They are in the house, and um, they yep. did play a lot of TGT decks. But maybe in the end, they decided that uh, just normal decks are just more consistent, you know? Yeah, and they can uh, easily get uh, TGT packs from Amazon, right? Oh, yeah. Amazon. The Amazon App Store. Yeah, it's a pretty good deal for packs, for TGT packs. I would definitely visit there if you're missing some TGT cards. Oh. <laughs> <Wait. laughs> wow, so beach. Yeah, I mean, um, everybody needs packs right now, so why not get them from Amazon if the discount is good? Yep, indeed. All right, so um, I think it's uh, one of the problems with Temple Storm right now is that hype is through, right? So if Gar actually queues again, it's going to be very awkward because they know that Eloise is going to um, be next because of the bench rule. So if I'm Archon right now, well, I mean, if I'm playing in Team Archon's uh, roster right now, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, uh, I would Amaz actually, confirmed leaving Archon. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually um, expect Eloise to be next. So I would bring a pretty good counter to like the uh, Warlock or the Paladin. And does a counter to that exist in Arcos well, lineup? Well, the problem is there's so many different types of Warlock and so many different types of Paladin out there right now mm -hmm. that it's. I would say it's pretty difficult to like find a counter to both of them. Uh, Patron Warrior does seem to be a good counter to like all Paladin lists and maybe like the Zoo list if Eloise is running Zoo. But Patron Warrior is already out, so I can't really think of too much. Okay, well, the Rogue versus Warlock matchup is the one up next. We already know that Rogue is running the, um, you know, the weapon buff deck with the Auto Barbers, the Assassin's Blade, stuff like that. But Eloise, hey, who knows? We might see a new creation. Yeah, it would be interesting to see some new cards, and there's a Wrath card right away. New card? Hey, Wrath card, I think a lot of people gave it too much hate. Right? They were like, oh, I shield slap from 30 and then you deal 30 <laughs> damage to the face. Obviously, that's the first thing I think of. But if you look at it a different way, it's actually just a Flamer Imp, right? And Flamer Imp <laughs> is so good. Why not just play something that's a bit bigger? Yeah, I mean, it does cost one more mana too. But but still, it's it's a lot of stats. And uh, uh, I don't think you can replace a Juggler with it. But maybe the Haunted Creeper. Haunted Creeper is really low pressure. And whenever I see a Zoo play a Haunted Creeper against me on turn 2, I'm really happy because I see it. Yes, it's a fast deck, but it plays one attack power, so Wrath card mm -hmm. is a huge threat, and if you don't have the, the Frostbolt or, or similar card for it straight away, it's, it can easily deal 8 or 12 damage. Yeah, that actually makes sense. I mean, it's a VG, you play a lot of Handlock, right? And yes. when your opponent plays, like, Egg into Haunted Creeper, like, mm -hmm. how do you feel versus a Flame Imp versus a Wrath and the Wrath card? Yeah, I'm always, like, terrified of the of the Knife Jugglers and, uh, and Flame Imps, and we never see anything else on those early turns, and it's just, uh, it's so great. Exactly. Alright, well, Firebat has a very good answer here, the backstab. Oh yeah, Firebat has exactly the cards he needs to fight for this early game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, Eloise's hand is, hand is so nice, but uh, Firebat has the answers. Oh, no. I think we <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, Eloise would just kill herself without actually ever taking a single point of damage. That's so funny. I mean, the two Brad cards, two flame imps. That's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of damage to Eloise's face, and uh, and when you add it, when you add the life that damage on on top of it, <laughs> it's pretty rough. Yeah. <laughs> And playing against Rogue, there's also always like yeah, things like Avis rates. It's actually gonna add up to quite a bit. Uh huh, indeed. But I mean, what other choices do you have? Oh, Lance Whoa. Carrier! It's pretty cool. Oh, that's some synergy with the Nerubian Egg. Mm hmm. But wouldn't at that point Abusive be better? I think you wanna play Lance Carrier on the minion that survives, right? That's like, oh. otherwise, why would you play Abusive? Yeah, that's true. It's uh, in, the, in this situation, it's strictly worse, yeah. That is true. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Lance Carrier, but I, I see some people have moderate success with it. Okay. I have to say, though, this is almost definitely a Chinese list. I've seen a lot of Chinese players really innovating with their zoo decks. After all, like China is kind of like the, the land of the zoo where previously in the last year, or in 2014 at least, pretty much everyone qualified through two BlizzCon off of China with their zoo decks. Are we going to see a prep oil? 
I think we yep, are. Yep, I think we are. Definitely. We can re-equip a new dagger as well. And, oh man, Eloise playing three flame imps pretty much in total. It's going to get her down solo. Uh, 14 life at turn three. Wow. Oh my. How do you play the Frat God? Flame the juggler. damage from I've played Vlari is going to, to, to be quite amazing. <laughs> well, I guess uh, you want to try to roll the knife juggler first, uh, the flame juggler first, right? I mean, if, uh -huh. it, if it actually kills it, you can actually put your buff on the egg. And that's actually a good meaning, right? Would yeah. you play a 2 2 death rattle that when the opponent can't deal with it, it just keeps on dealing 2 damage every turn? Yeah. My problem. It's a huge deal. Like, if not, she, does she hit the head? Hit, hit the hit. <laughs> the oh, yeah. That's it. Oh, oh that's pretty cool. Wow. Oh, I'm gonna go with the Wrath card instead? <laughs> oh, oh, man. Play Flurry would be lethal, right? No, not, <laughs> oh, would it? Yeah, it Play would. Flurry would be lethal, because... Wait, yeah, actually... Yeah, we know this right. <laughs> don't play the Wrath card. <laughs> I, I, I think you have to. Or, you like, have if you to? don't, like... Yeah, you have to. If you don't, like, there's no way to win. Oh. Uh, That's so like you brutal. just have you have like one dead card in your hand. Yeah, you're never gonna play it now, right? Yeah. So yeah, with this side of play, like she has one dead card in her hand. She oh, needs man. to run like Fist of Jaraxxus in order to get some use out of that now. Okay. Well, Fireback actually uh, whiffed here. And yeah, but Firebat should have time. But Firebat doesn't need much more. All Firebat needs is uh is uh something like a deadly poison or another Avis right? Yeah, that's true. So that's right now, you're why? Zoo, you're stuck at this point where you can't tap because you lose life. You can't play Wrath Guard because you lose life. <laughs> so you, uh, so, man, you're just going with what you have on the board right now, I guess. Oh man, that just <laughs> feels so bad. It's so ridiculous. But I think that if there's a Flurry in the in the Rogue's hand, uh, Eloise is going to die anyway, or lose the game anyway. So I, I think she has to play the Wrath Guard here. Okay, that's actually a very good, yeah, pretty good assessment. If there's a flurry, there's no way to win. What a predicament. Ah. So yeah, like I guess... Backstab uh, would give a <laughs> little then. If, if, actually, if that that's true. Yeah. This is pretty funny. Alright, well... Not quite lethal for Firebat just yet. Lothab no. is going to seal away um, a little bit of craziness. Like for example, Power of Warming Doom Guard would be lethal. Uh, for Eloise. Mm. Yeah. Drake instead is gonna get you closer to Lethal, right? You're drawing more of your deck. Ooh. Okay. Oh, it actually doesn't help that much. Well, Does play. it? It needs to be comboed somehow. Yep. Looking for that combo card. Whoa! Wow! So aggressive. If there's like another soul fire, it could be Lethal, but I, I guess she's gonna... She might soul fire the Drake. It's so far to discard the, yeah. the Wrath Guard, perfect. Yeah, you get rid of it. <laughs> possibilities. I think, uh, like, Eloise, to me, she it feels like she's playing some kind of, like, Challenge Stone tournament where she, like, you're forced to, like, put as many TGT cards as possible into your deck. Alright. So the challenge is every card that deals damage, right? And it can yeah. also deal damage to yourself. Wow. So we we should also keep a count of um, how many TGT decks win, or like the record of TGT decks versus non TGT decks. And right now, I believe it's one to one with mm -hmm. uh, the TGT deck in the third match, uh, probably on the back foot. Mm, she's That's probably thinking about whether or not to play the Wrath card here. Uh, by attacking first, she locks in her in herself into not tapping. Oh man, you can't tap. You can't play Wrath yeah. card, and I guess you're going with what you have. Firebat needs to. Kill or it needs an answer to the board. Is this yeah, lethal? Deadly poison. Another. That's, uh, that's, exactly. that's 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 lethal. Oh my yeah. god. Oh, oh what a card. Eloise had some options there. She could adapt for the lethal. Try to get the, the power of evolving or uh, of the second uh, soul fire. But she made the decision that uh, it's uh, there's not enough out. So there's probably only those three. So I, I would imagine that was two two power evolvings and uh, one soul fire remaining. And she thought her chances are better than the three out of. Uh, whatever 20 there was remaining at that point. Right. And um, so it ties up the series after Firebat wins the game. And uh, yeah, once again, it's kind of like the Gar and Eloise switching up, right? You do not want to get benched. 
but then you become very predictable if you play around that rule. It's just very, very... It's just not a good position to be in. So if I was mm. playing in the team league, I would definitely go with a strategy where all three of my... All three of the guys kind of win a game apiece and then go from there. Yeah, I feel like that really gives an advantage here to, to Team Archon by having all, all three players available at this point. Uh, avoiding those lockouts, because Tempestorm either is predictable or risks the lockout. Mm -hmm. And I'd say neither way is, uh, is that good. It's a, there's a lot of mind games, because if there's some uh, mind games where, uh, where the other team predicts the other team's uh, actions, they can abuse it. Right. Well, the, we're going to see Eloise's Wrath card deck again sooner. So I actually kind of want all the TGT decks to lose so we can see more of them. It's okay. kind, of, <laughs> kind of weird that way. Is it, Okay, but is that actually good for the game? Like, it's sending a message that you don't want to innovate and you want to stick with, like, the old standard tried-and-true patron warrior. Standard right. but boring. Well, I, I think it also creates a good story where, um, you know, Blizzard is giving us so many tools and that the tools are not obvious. I mean, they could have just printed a card where it just, you know, battle card destroy a grim patron, you know, something like that. <laughs> um, but then you can say that, oh, yeah, maybe after a month from now that, uh, yeah, patron is actually not the best deck and it's actually this uh, inspire mage deck or something, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, the funny thing about that is I think if a card has a battle cry, destroy a Grim Patron, it's it's not like even that good because you need to destroy more than one Grim Patron. Yeah, one is not good. Oh, oh no! Oh man. Ah, if only Grim Patron was a demon, right? We can use like yeah. Light's Champion against it. Mm. Yeah. Let's, let's see. Maybe in the future. There's still a lot of time. Everybody's still very hyped, I think. Yep. So I want to see a Paladin deck right now, is that okay? From I don't care who, which one is playing it, but I want to see a Paladin deck. There's no way that a Paladin deck would be anything that we've seen before, right? I mean, Six could be playing the old face Pala, but please yeah, no. But, yeah, but even with the face Pala, like you said before the match, right? The Argent Horse Rider, 2-1 uh, yeah. charge Divine Shield, it seems really, really good. But let's yeah. uh, let's run a Firebat Mage versus Eloise's Paladin. Eloise is actually playing twice, so um, she's yeah. on the verge of getting benched. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I Firebat think the... Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say I think like the two surprising cards of TGT so far are that Argent Horseman that might be in an aggro paladin, and also the Murloc, um, the Murloc Summoner from Paladin. Murloc Summoner. Yeah. <laughs> Murloc Summoner. It's it's pretty sick. I I definitely <laughs> underestimated that card. Now that I've seen it in action, there's there's so much value in it. Yeah. The drawback for paying one extra mana for your tree drop is uh, like you, you can it it gets completely out of control if it survives for multiple turns. Yeah, I think one thing that um, a lot of people when evaluating TG cards, um, like the Inspire mechanic as well, misses missed is that Inspire minions demand a response at that turn. Otherwise, they just snowball out of control. Um, mm -hmm. So there you go. But Eloise, it seems like it's going to play a little bit of a mid range deck. We see the Tusk card Jouster. Oh. One of the very cool uh -oh. cards that just got released. The juggler is going to get punished by the scientist. The, 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 it's like it's a high risk, high reward play to go for the for the juggler first, because in case it survived, it would be a lot more damage. But uh, when there's a scientist like this, you would much rather have the shielded minibot out there. Oh yeah, I mean the knife juggler basically just it's like a dark bomb to the face at this moment, and your opponent yeah. doesn't even lose two mana, right? They get a secret out of it. It's a pretty good deal. Yeah, if there no, was no, uh, no, no scientist, this would have really uh, paid off. <laughs> but here we go, so there's gonna be that trade happening. Yeah, so, and just, mean, like you're, just like you were mentioning, Amaz, like, uh, like, Freeze Mage is still very good, especially in a meta where people are trying new decks like the Paladin and Shaman deck, or even right. Priest. But I mean, let's look at it this way. Does the oh, so we know Paladin is like abysmal against Freeze Mage, right? Because they don't put in enough pressure, and then they don't have, you know, enough heals to proc the stuff, you know, Frost Nova basically yeah. seals your board because you have minion combat. But does the does, does the uh, Tusk card Jouster actually swing the matchup to where Paladin is a little bit of a favorite? It's interesting. Uh, like the, the main, the, this matchup is really problematic for Paladin. It's a very bad one because of the way the Paladin works is, uh, is that you first put minions on the board and then you wait a turn and then you deal damage with those. And uh, when the minions get cleared quite easily with, because there's the like, uh, Freeze Mage has the most amount of AOE in the game. But it's Tusk or Joster, if there's two of those, it could potentially be 14 healing, maybe even a, even a low tap. 
it could be a lot, but my personal experience from the Tusker Joaster have been very disappointing because you have to still put those shielded minibots in the deck. You have to put the knife jugglers. There's so many low drops, and uh, I, yeah. I found myself uh, losing a lot of Joasters as a paladin. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. There's even a lot of zombie chows in your deck, and the other thing is, if you take out the, or if you put in like two the jousters in your deck, that means you're probably taking out like a Lotheb, which kind of fills a similar role, and also the um, anti killbot, which also f fills a similar role. So when you, even if you run the two jousters, it's still pretty bad. And just well, in fact, like, yeah. yeah, like before TGT, this was like, I think like the worst matchup in the game, or one of at least like top three. And it was uh like it was thirteen two with a eighty seven percent win rate to freeze mage. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah, uh, th that's gonna be a big deal. And uh, uh, Zola's hand, uh, no sorry, Firebat's hand right now is pretty amazing. So he definitely is way ahead here. But if those Tusker Jousters, if the Tusker Jousters come through, if if she manages to win those uh, those Jousters, maybe, maybe it will be enough. Yeah, you play well, Heliodin, you play every single heal card, you know, two holy lights, two sealed lights, you can pretty much never die. That might be wow. a thing. But well, so, there, you know that Eloise is playing Lay on Hands as well, right? So that's a lot yeah. of heal. Well, here's the thing. Um, I remember Stantifka played like an all healing paladin deck and he brought it to via game house cup just to counter freeze mage. Okay. And he still lost with it because, um, <laughs> oh, man. because like his opponent like played an Archmage Antonius and then for, like a Frost Nova, and he was like, "Oh, I have like all the heal I want, but I can't kill this Archmage." And it got like four fireballs, and he just died. Yeah. Sometimes you think we will ever get like a Archmage uh, type of card for Paladin? Like maybe every time you cast a spell, put a Holy Light into your hand. Wow. Wow. I mean, games will last forever. I'm uh, not sure if that's what <laughs> Blizzard wants. But, uh, hey, going back to the game here, Fireback actually played Emperor on a, um, you know, eight card hand. They're mostly AoEs, so that's yeah. pretty good. There's some burn in there. I, I would actually see that... Dealt. Yeah, so he's at nine HP now. Oh, <laughs> Fireback is pretty low. The sword to the face here might be a lot of pressure. You saw the face uh, and, uh, and the owl there. Yeah, all the um, emperor. I mean, you're owling a lot of things here. The doomsayer was not really played anyways. So. Oh, this is this is really interesting. That, that, that's a, another round of these guns will be coming in. Oh, <laughs> it's just insane. No, actually no, because it was silenced. No, no these guns, sir. Oh, healbot is very clutch. Whoa. Very very clutch because like we know that if Fireband actually throws Eloise's uh. Uh, board and also the face that consecrate would have popped the ice block, right? So, but the healbot actually just prevents that from happening. Yeah, it's very important at this stage. And also getting that five, five to face with that, and uh, getting a, most likely another five next, and that that is so huge. Right. Those minions combined with the two fireballs are almost enough to, for lethal already. So here, is this a reason to play uh, Tuscar Jester now? I mean, you don't lose the effect effectively, you're dating something. But do you want to wait for the Alex Strasser turn? Oh, this is actually a very hard turn for Eloise. Yeah. Yeah. Yet another problem with the Jousters against Freeze Mage is um, they're pretty much like your only standard 5 drop if you run them. Like, you don't run Lothab probably, and you don't run uh, Harrison Jones usually in this Paladin deck. So you sometimes like you skip your five drop turn if you don't have a lot of minions on the board and you can't quarter master either. Well, yeah, I mean, I just hate not establishing the board or you know putting pressure. So it's tough. Yeah. It's really tough. I think it looks like the play might be something to like kill kill off the heal, but then go for the jouster. It does survive a flame strike. Kind That's of. True. I mean, the flame strike could be discounted under these. Oh, our oh. Okay. Seems like we're gonna have to clear right. the board here. That makes sense, right? I mean, yeah. you're expecting Not the Alex Straza, and you want to save the heal for it. Yep. Saving and saving the heal. Like there would be an Alex Straza coming, and in that case, the, the Chester would be completely wasted. Mhm. Mm okay, a solid secret to actually extend the life even more. Just need to find more time. Yeah. To get the burst. Fireman doesn't need much more than a, than a Frostbolt right now. With, with a Frostbolt draw, he would have, uh, I believe, 20 damage in his hand, or in one turn, counting the ping. 
Okay. And uh, Eloise is a 19, so that's kind of scary. Yeah. No, not quite. Uh, I mean, he's still picking it up. No. Well, you can pick it up, but not for this turn. Double yeah, flame strike. Yeah. Double flame strike is actually like a lot of respect to like a lot of token decks right now that's running on, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think yeah. it's a pretty good meta game call. Mm -hmm. I think so too. With the, for example, the paladin, the new paladins get get destroyed by it. The new shamans get destroyed by it. Uh, it, it should be a good card to have overall. Okay. Still, still can... pick also against patrons. Yeah, so it's basically a race right now to see if Fireback gets the burn or where Eloise can proc the block. Uh, Eloise does not seem like she can proc the block next turn. No, because of that uh, that ice barrier. Fireback was a little bit like you know, hesitating there. I'm not sure if he was maybe thinking about not playing the scientist, because if the scientist gets gets killed right now, he does not get the last barrier. Right. Or he might have also been considering the the frost nova. Uh, I mean the sorry the blizzard just to um yeah there goes that scientist no secret pulled the the blizzard just to not take the aid. Oh man, pretty awkward for Eloise right now. It really, is. she she she's probably starting to worry about her life turtle too. It's those double double fireballs are a real threat. There's so many Sorry. guards uh, in Firebat's hand right now. Yeah, at this point, you're so close to like what Alex Trezor would put you in the first place. You may want to consider healing, right? I think the worst, the worst possible outcome is after you heal, uh, your freeze mage opponent uses Alex Trezor. That's yeah, just I think so. Not a good if the, the Alex Trezor would have happened already. It would have happened last turn, most likely, if it was there. Yeah. One other thing that jousting does is it actually gives you more information. Uh, like if you see your opponent get an Alex Trezor here. <laughs> oh. There you go. That is that's huge. pretty key. Only barely, but well, it is. It is not. Uh, yeah, that's a good point, Monk. I mean, in some decks, I don't think it actually matters that much to, to see what Joust happens. But since Freeze Mage only runs like, I don't know, six to seven minions or something like that, it actually is pretty good information. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Uh huh. That's. Aha! Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, you can Ice Lance the Tyrion to prevent it from attacking. Yeah. And then you I wouldn't can be also... surprised if the fireball went to the Jouster too. Right. But if you, if you put the fireball to face, well, I don't know. You probably just stick it to face because there could be like an equality. But I wouldn't yeah, blame for dealing too. with the Jouster. Oh, oh wow. there we go. Okay. There we go. And Firebass actually gonna get a little rewarded here because yeah. there's no way to deal with it. That also that that, um, that fireball on the Jouster keeps him completely safe from uh, from the I mean the, the ice block from getting bumped. That's true. That's actually very true. So uh, if he, let's say that he left up the Jouster and there was an equality consecration, it would have been six power on the board and uh, well, not quite enough to to both pop the block and uh, and to clear. But uh, yeah, that Antonides, there's no way for uh, for uh, Eloise right now to deal with the Antonides, and uh, that should uh, seal the game for uh, for Fiber. Yeah, Firebat just has too many of like the really good cards you want in the late game. Flame strikes and fireballs are. It's the perfect arena draft. <laughs> uh, yes, you can see that. And Eloise on the side is just like, man, the double quartermasters. The quartermasters is such a good card, but when you don't have anything to activate it with, it just feels so bad. Yeah, I, I noticed that these are like the double quartermaster, double defender of Argus. They're like the most situational cards in Paladin, and you can definitely tell it's really hurting her right now. Yeah. If the Arguses were like Murloc Knights, that would have been so much better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we saw the the three three. This I think it's like a Silver Hand Regent or something. Regent, Silver Hand Regent. Yeah. Regent, yes, yeah, Silver Hand Regent. We saw that in the deck, but we haven't seen a Murloc Knight, and I just feel like the Murloc Knight seems to be like fairly superior. I'm wondering why he doesn't have it. It does, but then at the same time, now you're a Paladin and you're running how many four drops? <laughs> so <laughs> I guess it's a hard balance to make. No, well, yeah. it's 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 more like it's a six drop, or which is fle which can be flexibly used as a four drop, right? Yeah, I think so. Like a lot of people think it's just like a strictly uh, a six drop, but if your team play it in an empty board in turn four, I think it's actually amazing. Like I've seen like fireballs go go against a Murloc Knight, and by that point, it really that sad. If you trade a fireball for Murloc Knight, I don't think so. 
Okay, well, two defender parks and the silver hand region. If this was a ladder game, I'm pretty sure that Elias would find the concede button, but uh, we're probably gonna play this to the end. Yeah, I guess. But definitely looks like a pretty unwinnable yeah. position. I think the uh, main swing turn was the anti field by drop and fire bat. That was so important. And oh, there you go. Yeah. And um, fire bat uh, wins another game for Archon. We're three two, and the fire bat is done for the day with a check mark. Uh, so good job on Archon. But on the other side, Temple Storm will see Eloise benched because Eloise wow. did, did lose uh, two games in a row. So it's gonna be Gar up next. Yeah, so Tempest are not, uh, I'm sorry, Archon not only ahead on the scores, but also that bench thing, it's, uh, it's actually a big deal, because they know that the, that the Eloise's uh, decks are, are not, uh, not going to be in the next match, and there's potentially something they can target from, uh, from Garo now. They know that there's only Hunter and Priest. What would be the class to beat those two? Um, if I'm Gar right now, and I'm staring at like a Paladin Druid and a Warlock, I do not like my... Priest too much. I mean, I'm assuming that it's normal priest. If it's dragon priest, it's actually pretty good against aggro. For example, like if I, I'm assuming Sixo is running uh, aggro paladin, so I would actually think that priest might be the best here. If it's a dragon paladin, uh, dra dra dragon priest, Jesus. If it's not, then I think uh, we just want to win that game uh, with the hunter to bring back Eloise. Yeah, I think. Uh well, I just want to point out um, about the previous game. I think it was really smart for Team Archon to bring Freeze Mage, and I actually question um, why Tempo Storm might not have brought Freeze Mage. It actually seems really good um, when GV or when TGT has come out, mm -hmm. simply because a lot of the um, the pre TGT decks seem to counter Freeze Mage in the sense that I think as the season went on in Archon Team League, there were more decks that were good against Freeze Mage, specifically the Mech Shaman. Which everyone began to use, or even the um, the the rogue that has the assassin's blade, which more and more teams began to use later on in the season. Right. So yeah, and uh, c compared to that, the new TGT decks are like the dragon priest, the um, the dra the uh, the mid range paladin, the mid range shaman, and those are all weak against the freeze mage. Yeah, if, if Team Liquid was still playing in the tournament, I would have absolutely like forced our team to play a freeze mage. I think it's in an amazing spot right now with the, right. with the new, new cards, all the inspire cards. You know, you kind of get punished by it. All the new, most of the new innovate the innovations uh, have have unfavorable matchups against it. So I think I think that's a good call from Marco, Team Arcon to bring the freeze and uh, and uh, it's really surprising that um, Tempestorm did not do so. Right, I, I'm well, also a great, uh, great freeze match player, so yeah. Yeah, so Lei is going to step up to the plate. It's his uh, second deck, so if Zelay wins this, he actually threw. And of course, Gar is looking for a win with the Priest to um, get Eloise off the bench and give Temple Storm a little bit more options. Yeah. I saw, um, in terms of what deck Zelay is using, I saw him playing Handlock yesterday on his stream, but who knows, that might just be to throw Temple Storm off their game. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, this has been some of those like discard uh, warlocks also around. I saw Firebat play a little bit of discard aggro zoo yesterday. I think it was. Yeah, and uh, well, it it worked sometimes. <laughs> and Flies <laughs> also played it today, and he had a fairly high win rate on the ladder. So that might be a, might be a viable strategy. But um, again, Digit has only been out for two days, so maybe that that uh, discard list isn't. Uh, isn't quite completed yet, and seeing the other decks from uh, from the Markon, they have been leaning towards the old deck list. So if it was Zoo, I would expect to see the old Zoo. If, if it's Handlock, probably not that many new cards. Right. I mean, Handlock is also really good in this meta right now, right? I mean, like we said, but uh, we are going to see a. Oh, we are going to see a Handlock. No, it looks like it. Yeah. yeah. Gar is actually rocking the Dragon Priest with the Dragonkin Sorcerer. Oh man. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if this is just Raynad's deck list that he played on stream um, over the past few days. And okay. it includes one Dragon King Sorcerer, um, two Holy Smites, and all the rest are Dragon Synergy cards and like Vol'jin. Okay. Is there, are there any um, uh, twins in the deck? Uh, twins? The, yeah, uh, so no, the there's no, yeah, no, no twins. No twins. Um, one issue with this deck is that it only runs one Shadow Word Death, though. 
So okay. that's definitely going to hurt him. Well, I guess because we saw the Vol'jin just now, Vol'jin kind of acts like the second death. Yeah, Vol'jin is yeah. amazing. But you kind of need more than one death. Or more than two uh, deaths, true. right? In, in this matchup. Oh. Yeah, I, I'm, I haven't played this matchup. I haven't been playing any hand talkers. I've been focused on the, on the new strategies after DGT, but this, uh, like, like normally this has been very one-sided matchup in favor of the yeah. of, of, of the hand lock, and I don't think anything has really changed all that much. Exactly. I think it, like yeah. this dragon priest. The, the Dragon Priest reminds me a lot of the Undertaker Priest that was popularized by Kibler and uh, Zayd a lot back in the day. Yeah. And that deck certainly didn't do well against uh, Handlock at all. No, the thing is that um, the Priest really struggles dealing with uh, with the Molten Giants. The Burst is not there no normally, unless this is like, some kind of unique unique list. So It's really hard to play around the Moldens and eventually those might swing the game around. Garan did pick up the Light Bomb there and that is absolutely a, an, like an amazing card against Handlock in general. Well, Chilma is also going to be here. Oh man, more TG cards. Bring it, bring it on. Yeah. Not I'm really loving. that good against War uh, Handlock though? It's just a 6 no. mana 6-6, six, six, uh, 7 mana 6-6, six, six, sorry. I wield the power. Yeah. I, I also want to point out at this point that uh, TGT decks are one and three against non-TGT decks so far. Okay. And wait, did you and, did you count the um, double up with the patron? So it's actually one and four. The double up the patron. Yeah, so, both teams won with patron. Yeah, but uh, in the first game, patron it was like a non-TGT deck against a non-TGT deck. Oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, mm. okay. Sure. Yeah, okay. makes sense. Yeah, and in this matchup, it seems like the the deck with the TGT cards is unfavored. So not looking to be good for TGT today. Seems that way. No, not good at all. There's a few options here. Uh, Zolig is a Cellfire and Mortal Coil off the, the Dragon King Sorcerer. Sorry, what is that called? Blackwing Corruptor. <laughs> uh, also another option would be the Defender and Coil. Yeah. Defender uh, and Coil makes more sense since you want more options. Uh, seems pretty sweet. It can get Shadow or Death, but you're not too, too worried. No, actually, it just gets traded. But, uh, yeah. Like, like um, yeah, in some matchups, you don't, like, or some situations, you, you want to avoid having five power minions against the priest. But, uh, you're ha as, a, as a handlock player, you're happy to see a death on that. If it was to happen, because then you know that there's one, de one less death for the giants. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean, if I'm looking at Gar's hand right now, it's so good if it's not versus Hanlock, right? I mean, all your minions have so much health. You have a two mana two four. You have a one mana two three. It's amazing. Yeah. But the problem That's is that you're not putting a lot of pressure in terms of attack value. It's a really rough hand from from Gar. I'm sure he runs Azure Drakes and uh, and cards like that. But instead of his on his turn five, he will have to play a two drop. Yeah. I think the, the one way Gar could win though is if he somehow gets a Yasera to stick on the board. Seeing that Zelay, he probably isn't going to run Siphon Soul with the Acidic Ooze in his hand. With um, Yeah, I just don't see him running Siphon Soul. It's not very common choice, especially if you do run the tech cards like the Ooze. And the silencing that you said is sometimes, you know. Even, even yeah, if you can kill it, if you just Iron Beak all it, 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 it gets yeah. the job done in most cases. Uh, yeah, only the, the only big problem with that is if, if the first user card ends up being awakened, then you might have a bad time. Yeah. The other issue is uh, a lot of these lists these days they only run one L, so it's like only your one answer to Yasera. Yeah, that is true. Personally, I, I really uh, I I want to I, I play two owls. I want to keep playing two owls. I think it's amazing to have two. But I've seen a bunch of lists with just one. Yeah. Well, so we just uh, Yeah. Not yeah. now, but. Later, later. We'll definitely need yep. it. Um, are, are there any like new TGT cards that you think might be like options in handlock? Oh, options mm. in handlock. <laughs> Not that many. Wow. I mean, I, I'm trying to figure out if the if the garrison commander thing is like a well, the two drop with the with the allows you to tap twice basically. If that's a thing in some sort of handler, but I don't think it finds its spot because that card I, I think is quite good. Two mana, two three. It's it's decent stats already, but. I, I don't know. You can kind of play it as an anti aggro card for maybe trading early on if you have to, and then in later game you can tap twice so you get your life total lower. It's actually a good thing in some matchups to get your life total lower cycling through your deck, but I, I'm not sure. 
Uh, Wilfred Fizzle bang, bang uh, most likely unplayable. I, I don't know how you can put that in. Yeah. yeah. I've, well, actually, I've seen, uh, um, if you are playing a handlock, you also have a inherent buff to it, right? Because there's so many joust cards now, and you're running mountain giant, molten giant. So every time you see those, your opponent can never win a joust. So right. even though Handlock might be playing TGT cards, they definitely counter TGT cards. Yeah, Frost Giant probably not worth it. I think that um, because that's uh, that's a card that a lot of people are suggesting because you want to hero power a lot, so you get cheaper Frost Giants. But uh, I, I feel like uh, Moltens and Mountains are both better and more important than the than the Frost Giants are, and you can't really fit in six Giants. Yeah, yeah. I've seen um, like players like Trump try the Fencing Coach in Handlock, but. To me, that seems more like a luxury card, kind of like the recombobulator. Um, yeah. Like what, what the what the fencing coach does is like you get a free uh, infernal if you go Draxus. Wow, right afterwards. that's true. That's that's pretty mm -hmm. something. But I think it's yeah. It also activates Wolf of Frizzle Bang, so let's not forget about that card. I'm trying to think oh, through yeah. the, the net, no, neutral cards. I did think about it a little bit even before the expansion came out, but I think that's very few cards. It's, it's kind of the same situation as with patrons. I think. Uh, the game developers were kind of intentionally trying to avoid uh, buffing uh, already strong existing strategies and rather have the, have some uh, new new things come out and I'm really happy about it. It does seem like if you actually give Warlock a specific Joust card that Handlocks would just run it for sure because they usually just run, run Joust anyways like nice immediately true. with Giants. So I could see Master Jouster maybe in it uh, but then not really right. <laughs> Yeah, it's unreliable. You, you sometimes you win it, but you still have those small minions. You have things like Sun Fury Protector, so you can't reliably win it. But um, it, 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 there can be arguments made that, uh, that most of the times it's good enough just as a 5-6, and if you win the Joust, it's, it, it, the, the times when you, where you are most likely to win the Joust are against uh, really fast attacks. But I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't think it's quite worth it. Yeah, I also don't think the 6 slot is that important for Handlock, since you can always like play a 4-drop and tap. That is true. Vulgen's gonna do quite a lot of work here. Uh, it's gonna be a Vulgen smite to kill anything on the board. And now you get a 6-8. Wow. Vulgen, really powerful card. Ooh. It, it, I'm, I'm a bit surprised that we didn't see that much Vulgen right after it was introduced. It's a, a bit of a like, sleeper card. I think it's gonna become a staple now in the in the Dragon Priest list. Especially yeah, if Dragon the meta is slower. Is Definitely very good, right? I mean, mm. you have s a lot of minions as well. You have all those two threes and two fours early game. So even with your Vulgen, you can actually trade. Um, I think the problem is that if you do not have the option, you're always going to use Vulgen and Smite. You're actually using two cards to remove something. I mean, sure, you get like a six whatever, like a six beast, uh, very, very good card afterwards. But be uh, the reliance on the combo of like two pieces definitely doesn't push it to be like a premium card. Yeah, yeah it's not even... Uh, yeah, it's not even an instant kill. Like, your opponent's battle cries will still go off. Your opponent's death rattles will still go off. And most cards these days do have one of those. Yeah, well, it's only five mana. I mean, if you land it on, let's say, a five toughness or, or six toughness minion, it's a six six for for five mana, and you gonna deal some damage. You're doing. I, I'm a huge fan of the card. I get out of me. Yeah, it's kind of like a fire element, so it'd be pretty that way, right? But once again. You need to do something along with it. It's the fire yeah, missile that could be really good at, but also could be really bad. It is more a small minion for the trade immediately. Well, over mm. at uh, Gara's side, you have 9 mana and you're facing down Sylvanas with uh, mm. pretty much no silence, uh, no steel as well, and Light Bomb doesn't really solve the problem that much, and your opponent's holding like 9 cards. It's a very bad spot yeah. to be in. That's still on us really annoying right now. Yeah, it's just like the... Right now, it's not the like the Giant or the Twilight Drake that are necessarily winning Zelay of the game. It's more just the consistent card draw that Zelay has. Meanwhile, Gara he hasn't drawn into any of his Northshire, so he's essentially just getting one card per turn compared to like the 1.5 per turn that Zelay has gotten. Mm -hmm. This is pretty brutal. Uh, Zelay has a... <laughs> Variety of answers to deal with this board. Uh, wow. Not the best turn for Emperor because all these cards in your hand are just tech cards. You just play want to play it in response to something. Um, but at the same time, you can do a lot of cool stuff like mm -hmm. Sylvanas can steal something if you can couple over Dark Bomb. Yeah, Dark Bomb, for example, Dark Bomb on the 
Vol'jin, then attacking to that, or simply Dark Bomb on the Sylvanas, attacking to the Drake. That, that might be even better, you get the 6 7 instead. Mortal Coil would be the perfect thing, because then he could attack into the Drake and coil, coil the Sylvanas afterwards. But the Dark Bomb, it's good enough. Let's see. Full hand, so that that being not really an option. <laughs> Let's yeah. see that uh, and uh, and the Emperor after this still. Yeah, Emperor seems pretty decent. Probably feeling uh, safe enough to just uh, tap 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 too. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a good card. Yeah, you're, you're seeing Dragon Priest, and I think if it's uh, maybe a different kind of priest, you might be afraid of the Arcanized Soul Priest plus double Flash Heal combo. Yeah, but yep. from a Dragon Priest, you wouldn't expect any kind of burst. But yeah, with this kind of priest, it's just like no pressure at all. The only burst is Holy Smite with a couple of Valens chosen, maybe, for extra spell power. But uh, yeah, this is just the nature of the matchup. It's just very, very one-sided. Hmm. It's so hard as a priest player. Gara, like the only real thing, well, he can try to clear off this board somehow, maybe with a combination of, uh, well, he has to use Dark Bomb eventually, but I think he's deciding between using the Chill Mall or maybe a Holy Nova here. The Light Bomb, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, the Light Bomb. Yeah, Light Bomb, exactly. Light wall, uh, <laughs> light, light wall clearing boards. Light yeah. wall, just the light wall here. Um, Shomar is not even that amazing here, huh? I mean, you play no. it, and then your opponent just silences it. Uh, forced to use the light bomb to kill one creature. Yeah, he had to do it. it. This is not. It didn't feel like the time for light bomb. That is not. That's simply not enough value for the light bomb to be winning the game. But with the, in these circumstances, it's, it's just something that he had to do. Well, the circumstances doesn't mean you can come back in the game, though. So Lay's just gonna put on, keep on putting more threats. You just saw a light bomb. Yep. You saw a shadow word death already. This giant looks really, really safe from uh, most responses, and yeah. like, it, it's just like the the Halo player is asking the priest the questions, right? And the priests are gonna run out of answers sooner or later because life tap is the main reason that this matchup is so yeah. great for the Hanlon. I think we're gonna see a heal, but yeah, normally you don't wanna play it before Molten turns are played, but I mean, it's just <laughs> like, he's so far ahead that he can play around everything. And he, even even after the, the heal, but he can still play the Molten for 8 mana. So just yeah. like, just uh, by the, the, the off chance that Gara would be playing uh, some kind of weird burst thing. Uh, as unlikely as it is, I think the heal was to play over the bolster. Yeah, Dragon King Sorcerer, man. Uh, doesn't seem as good right now. Just gonna go with the Chill Maw. And, um. That is lethal, I believe. With that the, is oh. pretty lethal. I mean, we have Silence with two Hellfires. Yeah. That's a lot of damage. A few points of overkill. I uh, do two points uh, extra, I think. Six from hand and, uh. 12, uh, four, uh, 16 on the, on the board. Well, let's see if he spots it. <laughs> it's not well, I mean, oh man, you do not want to miss this lethal. That I mean, would be he didn't, do it yet. he didn't do it yet. He's, he's, he looks like he's still thinking. Oh, oh my god! Oh. Man. Chilma, man. Chilma bringing in the mind games. So, yeah. the first miss like lethal it. of TGT. Oh no, well he's still gonna win the game, it's, it's not gonna change the result, he, there's, there's zero chance of getting punished for it. Zero percent chance of getting punished. Yeah. So, at that point it's just extended BM, right? Yeah, it's just extended BM. He wants to not only crush, crush uh, Temperstorm, but also their morale. Oh wow. Yep. Well, make the biggest ball you can. I mean, is Silly gonna see the out this time? <laughs> This one's a little more obvious. Like, oh, he doesn't have an owl. Otherwise, I would have just died. I mean, oh, actually, not really. He doesn't know he has hellfires. I guess. There's the owl for the watcher, so he can attack with the watcher, right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man. Right, there you go. Yeah. Zero percent chance to punish. Zelay wins another game for Team Arcon, and uh, mm -hmm. basically, you're up four two. Or we are yeah. up four two. <laughs> wow, the reverse here. Um, we started the series by a quick two zero from Hyde. 
But the, the mark on just completely turning it around here. Now, uh, now suddenly four games in a row. Four and two in a commanding lead. Eloisa is still bent, so Gara has to keep playing. Yeah. Yeah, well, more important than the actual match score is that TGT decks are 1-4 and four now against non-TGT decks. And oh, Patron okay. Warrior is now 2-0 in a TGT meta. We've seen five decks from, from Team Archon and uh, zero TGT cards, I believe. Correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong. I, I, I think that Team Archon has not played a single new card. I mean, I think it's actually pretty special if Team Archon played second. So, like, maybe, for example, like, Force and Boys and Hillam, which are going to play later today, they actually playing, like, a lot of TG cards, and then we go, like, wow, it's actually refreshing to see that TG cards are not used. But with this ordering, it might be a bit weird. Um, it's also interesting to note that if Gara actually loses this next game, then he's benched as well. And mm -hmm. with the bench rule, if all players are benched, then all players become unbenched. So, um, <laughs> there's actually a compensation prize if uh, Kara loses this game. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> that feels so bad. <laughs> I actually have never heard of that rule, but I guess it makes sense. It's better than that time that all three players were benched. Oh, if all three players are benched, <laughs> you just lost the same. Yeah, it's a 6 0 right there, right? Or maybe not 6 0, but no, it has to be. It has no, to be. It has it to be. But six games in a row still, yeah. So they, they can take like a 5 0 lead and then end up with everyone getting benched. That's true. There, there, That's true. There was definitely a team that had all three players benched before uh, Wait, in no, like the last no. two weeks. It can be you like 6 1. You can't go 5 0. You can go 3 0. Everyone can win once and then lose like two in a row. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah, 3 0. So 6 3 is the best they can yeah. do. Wow, we are going very, very mathematical. <laughs> but there you go. 6 is going to bring Druid. Against Hunt, uh, Gar's lineup, once again, Gar has to play, but he can choose any deck he wants, and he's going to go with Hunter against Druid. I would say that this is a Hunter mm -hmm. favorite. Gar with his Bear Trap Hunter, trying, taking another shot, and uh, I'm kind of happy that this Tempo Storm is playing some new cards, so we don't have to put like shoes on our heads to pre prove that this is not pre-recorded last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, but um, Tempo Storm right now is not in a winning position. And oh man, that is Living uh, Roots! First TGD card from Archon. Yeah, okay. it's, it should be quite good for uh, yeah. against the Hunter. That yeah. hand I, from, uh, from Xyx, so it's really. I, I think it's gonna keep everything. Yep. Yeah. Oh, he did already. It, it, yeah, in a way, the Chill and Yeti is almost a TGT card, right? Because uh, just like of the other cards that work with it, people are adding in those new four drops. Yeah, Amnesiac is definitely the Druid player, which introduced like. He, uh, he was telling me like. Chilling Yeti is my favorite card. I always want to play it. And there you go. Um, now that Druids have like a million wall growths, like uh, me and Monk previously discussed earlier in this series, uh, it's just very natural to play more four drops, right? Uh, turn two is your wall growth into turn four. How can a vanilla minion be uh, somebody's favorite card? I mean, it, <laughs> it's yeah. so boring as it gets. <laughs> Sorry. It's a Yeti. I mean, look at it. Look at the beard. Look at those muscles. No, oh, man. Well, it is pretty chill. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> Sorry about that one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so, Vita's second favorite card is the uh, Ice Rager, of course. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Right after Magma Rage. Okay. I think, uh, okay, so, Amaz, you mentioned that um, the the Hunter is favored in this matchup, and I think, like, pretty much everyone will tell you, or a, a lot, most pros will tell you that the Hunter is favored. Okay. But in actual games, it's actually Druid that wins slightly more. It's 25 to 35, or 29 okay. to 35 in favor of the Druid. So it's like 45% uh, for the mid-range Hunter and 55 oh, for Druid. Yeah, but the thing is, like, it doesn't take into account the um, the archetypes, right? Uh, we're taking account the archetype of mid-range Hunter versus Druid right now. And we no, do it does. It does? Yes. Wait. My stats. What? Okay. So you, no, no, you it, it definitely record? does. The record you it's just not, gave me is mid-range hunter versus... Yes. It's not just like the class, it's the, the archetype. Wow. Really? Yes. Then that's just so sad for the mid-range hunter. You don't even beat your uh, theoretically best matchup. Well, I mean... That's how it works. The Hellmaster is a very sick draw here, that's for sure. Yeah, after seeing that silence happen. Wait, wait, do you want to play Snapjaw first so you get a bigger Hellmaster value? Oh, so greedy. I, I don't know. 
I, I think he would just throw it out there right now. It's it's more pressure that way. Because you, you're not going to play the Houndmaster next turn. You want to play low tip. Like, actually, what, last turn, last turn, Sixo actually silenced the Mad Sciences. I'm actually very surprised about that. I feel yeah. like that's like. I, I don't like that, actually. Not, don't well, like that at Sixo's all. Sixo is just really scared of those bear traps. I mean, <laughs> we know it's bear trap too, right? Uh, and well, the, there were freezing traps in that deck. Sure. Yeah, we saw at least one, yeah, that's true. But I just I think that Houndmaster is just like way superior here. Yeah. yeah, that is definitely true. But I don't I think that Keeper of the Grove is actually gonna punish Sixo quite a bit. You always wanna hold some hold uh -huh. the keeper for like a knife juggler, you know, silencing a even a high main or a houndmaster target, and him doing that is just like there's a two four. Two fours don't do anything against hunters. Yeah. Oh. Gora is just curving out here absolutely perfectly. I, I don't know, like, what, what, what can I. What can uh, really do? The other thing about science and the mad scientist is that because you know your opponent, he plays a lot of bear traps, what you can do is, like, you can let him get the trap out, but at the same time, just, like, contest the board and never attack face. And that works pretty well as well. Like, you don't necessarily need to silence, um, like, a bear trap, essentially. And we know that silencing a minion, like a mass scientist, doesn't actually gain you a temple, right? It actually just puts the same amount of temple on the board. Mass scientist only activates when it's dead. So, it actually, six of turn four play was just to play a true four. But then, uh, Gara over on the other side here, uh, it seems like we have a lot of options. One possible option might include, you know, Animal Companion, a Huffer, or a Leoc. That'll be very good. But no, yeah. I'm just gonna take a six straight here and just play low level and push him some damage. Yeah, it's really nice to like kind of prepare for the for the high man for next turn. Well, the Yeti doesn't seem as good right now. It just gets mm -hmm. eaten alive by the low thub, So, oh man. Going for the hero or the over the ass pirate. Yeah, I mean, you really want the keep to go to actually do something. I mean, you played it at turn four, right? So. Mm -hmm. Forced to make your trade a little bit more awkward. Yeah. Now this is just a dominating position for Gara. Like the whole uh, game between the Druid and the Hunter is like whether the Hunter can set up a clean uh, turn six of on a high main, and this is just perfect. It's even better than a clean. It's uh, it's gonna have a board to go with it. I, I think a lot of them should one. probably go face. But I mean, oh. but trade one one for that. Then it's a close call. Why would you add that into the chill chill wind area? Is it like to prevent some kind of Keeper silence straight for the high man. I'm not sure. No, no, I actually like that because like a five, like one half minions are actually very strong against druids, right? Because they actually have to clear it, and when they spend time clearing it, it means they have to spend time not developing any creatures. And also a five one with a savannah high man on the board, I think it's just amazing. Uh, if the yeti actually stays on board, he could actually, um, you know, six can actually choose to do something else um, with his Maybe. with his stuff, yeah. you know, just but the five, out. Five, yeah. The 5 and load that it's just a, it does die to things like Brad for 1, Swipe. Well, he doesn't yeah, have any kill commands in his hand yet. If right. there was 2 kill commands, I'm sure he would have went face. Hmm. Well, it is pretty good here. I mean, that 5-1 is, is going to get a trade with the 5-5. Five, oh, five man. Right. Yeah, that low that is going to be too good. And yet, yeah, Sixel realizes that this game is pretty over. And um, yeah, Gaur has won a game, so... Eloise is now unbenched, and uh, we are at looking at a 4-3 to three score, with Archon still yeah. in the lead. First time we saw new cards from the Archon, those those are Dernastus Aspirants, and they, they never got played. Maybe that's why they lost, playing some new cards, bad idea. <laughs> yeah, like we can see uh, there were new, no new cards played by a team, or by Tempo Storm and Gar in the previous game, even though he had them in his deck. Mm. So kind of a bad luck charm to play those new cards. Yeah, there's no impact from, from those new cards on yeah. either side of the interaction. But the thing is now, if we look at the matchups, we still have uh, the Druid versus Priest, which is a pretty good matchup for the Druid. But then Eloise has the uh, Zoo against the Druid, which uh, we believe it's a pretty good matchup. I'm not really sure if Aspirants and Living Roots are actually going to make that matchup a bit better, but I don't feel like that. And of course, we also have the uh, Secret Paladin deck that Sixo did not reveal just yet. The Living Roots definitely helps. You can, you can deal with Juggler and the Flaming easily by just using one mana, so that's nice. 
But uh, I, I, I have to say that I, I still think that it favors the zoo. It's just that the way that the, the druid works, where, where all the removal is, aside from the living roots, is, is pretty expensive. Even swipe, uh, it's not that efficient necessarily. It, it, it's not, a, not, not the strongest AOE in the game, and it's quite mana extensive. So, so it's, it's, it's difficult for the druid to clear. I, I have to favor the zoo. Yeah. yeah. At this, at the same time, though, we see a lot of druid versus zoo games, uh, and in a race where the druid can just like combo out the zoo sometimes, and I think Wrathguard really hurts the zoo in that respect. I guess yeah, health is kind of important sometimes when you go that direction where you just like play four flame amps in a sense. Uh, when your opponent has the answer to the overboard. Suddenly, you don't have a lot of flexible room to tap anymore, right? Like, like last game, we see LOE is actually just not mm -hmm. tapping ever. It turned 5, <laughs> because she's too low health. Yeah, but that was also, it was a ridiculous draw. She ended up drawing both of the Flame Imps and both of the Wrath Gods. Whereas if, if you draw one, one Flame Imp, one Wrath God, you're probably just fine. You, okay. But just make sure that you are the aggressor and your opponent needs to spend their, their removal on the minions and not be able to like uh, punish you for it. So, if you are the aggressor, your life total shouldn't matter that much. It was just unfortunate for Melois to draw all of those. Alright, it seems that teams are still choosing decks, and that's why we have a little bit of a delay. And yeah, it's actually coming down to the end of the series. Uh, well, it's very close to it. Yeah, Gara now... Uh, Gara winning that match was really big for Tempo Storm. I was al almost ready to call it for, them, for Team Archon already. But mm -hmm. now with Gara's win, uh, LOE is no longer benched. They can just pick whatever they want here. That mm -hmm. gives them more options. I think we need to uh, remind viewers that this is a double elimination bracket where um, the team that actually wins this match goes through to... Uh, well, well, both of the teams are going to play tomorrow. Uh, whether you go to the winner's bracket or loser's bracket is basically what we're determining right now. And it's very simple. When you win two series, you're through to the finals. And if you lose two series, then you are out. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. So we haven't actually seen Sixo's last deck yet, the Paladin yep. deck. Exactly. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to that. And I, I do have a feeling it's going to be more of a mid-range Paladin since I don't feel like Aggro Paladin is really that amazing in this metagame when you're, you're dealing with like the... The uh, like the totems from shaman and like the other mid range paladins that just got pretty huge buffs and in addition to that like dragon priest even and of course good old patron warrior so a lot of bad matchups in that respect for aggro paladins. Yep, we're gonna see the paladin here. It's going to be interesting. I'm sure that we'll see it, at least those murlocs. They're so powerful. Even in well, I don't know if it fits divine favor deck that well, but most of the paladin lists should probably include it. It, when, he, when I looked at the card the first time, it looked like a fun card. Oh, there's someone random, random Murloc, but the power level, you know, that is quite amazing. Oh, well, this wow. is Wow! Is he play, he's playing the, what, what's it called? The Mysterious Magic. Challenger. Oh man, I wait, just, Strife was talking about this. Yeah, and wait a minute. Uh, did, did you see a Fist of Jaraxxus in Eloise's hand? <laughs> did you oh. see that? Oh. So both these, um, yeah, both of them are going like full TGT. <laughs> yes, there we go. Test the fist. But Strike was talking about this uh, mysterious challenger paladin, and well, I saw I saw him tweet about it that he's tried multiple different versions, and they have all been working amazing. I have personally have never seen it before. I have not seen it on the ladder. I have not tried it out. I thought the drawback from uh, from putting those secrets into the deck would be too much to, to ever make it viable. I'm so interested to see how it plays out. Yeah. We do have to keep in mind that 6-0 is, uh, I think he's still in Korea right now. So he's practicing with a lot of the Korean players and he might be used to a, a slightly different metagame than we are in the West. Yeah, that is possible. Noble Sack kind of uh, hurting right now. Yeah. Let's see, if he picks up like Blessing of Might, that would be so huge. Oh, Redemption. Oh, oh no. Six not wanting to draw those right now. Yeah, this is exactly what you're talking about. Just like getting all these like terrible secrets out. 
Yeah, if there's a soul so, state in your deck, the mysterious challenger would be so amazing, but you can't really avoid drawing them at times. I've also seen like a a secret keeper deck getting used, um, and it was posted on the competitive Hearthstone Reddit. It's basically like secret keeper is exactly like Undertaker, and if you get like good secrets out, it's you can snowball with the secret keeper as well. But uh, I'm not sure we're gonna see that in Sixo's particular deck. I find it kind of hilarious because Secret Keeper is often considered it's like a almost a joke card, but uh, it's not that bad. I mean, if you have a lot of secrets, it's, it can be quite good. So here, a few a few different options, all of which in, involving a flame imp, I believe. Probably the egg to be protected against the uh, AOE, because uh, it's it, we are coming to turn four. Ooh. Well, uh, that was a bit of a an unfortunate guess from uh, from Eloise. Uh, yeah. Definitely working six of favor for the two <laughs> the two 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 to be a, be a redemption. But uh, how do you predict the redemption? I don't think you can anyhow. There we go. The ruby and to to protect against the Yui. I think it's a uh, right call. There is no AoE, but this just makes so much sense. Oh, a Noble Sacrifice. That's the last Noble Sack in the deck, so... so not only is it a... Is it a card that... Um, doesn't really do anything, but he also has no Noble Sacrifice left when the Mysterious Challenger hits the board. So that's Wait, one less... Wait, no. There might be, like, double copies of Secrets, right? Yeah. Yeah, but he, he played one Noble Sacrifice in turn one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah of but course. That is the last one. So, well, actually, like... I don't think it looks as bad as it might have seemed in the opening round because 6-0 is like somewhat stabilized at a pretty high health and it's he, he probably can stall until turn 6 and at which like all the secrets will come out. Oh mm -hmm. man, it doesn't look that good at least right now. I, I think we're encountering this problem where Savage you mentioned before, if you bring like an experimental deck, you have to have at least a win with it, right? And yeah. this might come back to haunt 6-0. It's pretty scary. I can imagine the mysterious challenges is like incredibly powerful when you just keep the secrets in the deck and and then uh, manage to draw whatever else you have in there. Because the, right. the value from the six mana six six it's it's insane. But here six are drawing all those secrets. How, how many did he draw? Like was it five? Like four secrets? Yeah, Very four maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That's a little bit too much. Yes. Okay. Good. The knife does not actually hit the egg, Breathfire proccing it, but I guess the best target would have been to hit the Wrath Guard as well. Yeah, I think so. If you yellow is, you, you kind of have to take out the juggler, I think. Yeah, you, definitely. I guess uh, there are so many bad things that can happen if you leave it up. Most terrible battles and, and all. Alright, you took 3 damage to the face here, it doesn't really matter. Here's such a high level tool. All that much, no. Okay, here we see it. How many is it gonna be? Here we go! Oh! oh more secrets! Oh my god! Wow! That? that is awesome! That, this is awesome, yeah. Wow, oh. I, I love it. Oh. oh! Wow! We have this interactions too, but wait, wait, wait. So it's a redemption, right? It's a redemption? It's a repentance? Yeah, it should be. Yeah, it should be one redemption. There's like a revenge, avenge. No, that's revenge. Revenge, avenge. <laughs> revenge and avenge. No, uh, avenge and uh, redemption. Uh, uh, probably one of one, one uh, competitive spirit. Oh, this is so sick! Wait, wait, wait. Okay, it's redemption, avenge, avenge. Repentance, repentance, and comparison. Okay, yeah, yeah, of course. Repentance is actually so huge if if it gets hit on the Doom God. Well, it is gonna hit on the Doom God. Oh, actually no, because uh, yeah, Eloise can play just something else, right? Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, Eloise is actually playing oh, really well against it. I mean, the Repentance. Well, that's that's not very good. <laughs> oh, that's deal one damage. That seems yeah. abysmal. Uh, and then there's no more get downs, so Eloise is gonna hit the phase. Oh, yeah. Oh, she ended turn. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this looks like so much there fun. Is oh, you can't play this myself. <laughs> wow! Wait, we're pushing seven damage here. 
That's oh my. pretty good. Yeah. Wow. But if uh, if if Eloise manages to fully clear this board, there's, there's not gonna be like six six on each on uh, like a direct damage. Well, oh man, the fist of Jurassic is gonna be pretty huge here. It is, cause if he doesn't hit it on the mysterious jump, no, hold on. Huh. Oh, this is so cool because there's uh there's redemption and there's yeah. also avenge, right? It's a really tricky situation. I think the worst case is that the fist goes to the face, right? Oh yeah. That, that's just terrible. You do not want a fist to face. So the the secret keeper needs to die first. Yes. No, no, what does it matter? Maybe it doesn't matter. It's only gonna have one HP when it revives. That's probably better for Eloise. So she can now uh, trade the Nerubian into it first and then a one one into the other one. Whoa. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay. This actually works out quite quite well for her. Unless the animations take too long, how long is it gonna be? <laughs> not that much stroke left. Yeah, maybe oh, not too long. Yeah, she got it in time. Alright, so the competitive spirit is not gonna proc because there's no minions on uh, 6 of zero. Oh! What a top deck! Oh yeah, that's that great. Amazing. With the competitive spirit. I didn't know that it, it doesn't trigger at all if you have no minions. I, I thought it would've just like went off and then not buff anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, another bad draw. I think the original list on Reddit had two quartermasters in it. Wow. So it'd be pretty huge if quartermaster were drawn. Oh yeah. Alright, so what is 6-0 trying to draw here? If Divine Favor is in the deck, that would be really bad. Oh, another yeah. secret. Oh, oh that's man. Not, that's exciting. Wait, so are you running like 10 secrets in this deck? Yeah, I think it is 10. So he's yeah, drawn he's like three of them. He's played like three of them. Yeah. Um, so I think he's played eight secrets in total, out of the ten in his deck. Okay. Might be only sing only a single copy of Repentance. Mm. Well, this Avenge is actually really huge. Oh, actually, the Owl is really huge the too. Owl. Oh, that too. Yeah. Wow, this is swinging back and forth. This is it sure is. All right, Avenge is gonna proc. Ooh, on that on the one. already buffed minion. Oh man. There we go. Okay. And now is Eloise gonna tap after playing the owl? I think so. Like how how can uh, six or pull five damage? So ah, uh, blessing of kings would do it. Yeah, blessing of kings would do it. That's probably the only thing. Okay, Lance Carey is going to buff it up. And 6-0, uh, top decking, another one! Wow. That's uh, not exactly what he was looking for. It's better than getting a, you know, another secret, right? No, that's true. But there's almost none left. There might be the second repentance, which would, would have been horrible. I guess it's Consecration still... would be the best draw. Oh, absolutely, yeah. That's a little bit too much to ask. <laughs> that would have been amazing. Or, or like a true silver. True silver would have, would have let him race. Yeah, actually, do you just race anyways? Because like Me. you deal four damage right now, and then if your uh, if your opponent taps, you consecrate an out. Uh, if it, if they don't, then you know true silver is an out. There's actually a lot of outs, and you are spawning mm. quite a few dudes. Yeah. Oh, no, gonna go mm. So not trading here that. Uh, does enable lethal with, uh, with the last doom card if Eloise wants to draw it. Yeah, but well, I mean, he's still he's still one off from a soul fire death and a power overwhelming death. That's true. Oh man, this is so bad here. It is. It, it is pretty bad. If you Eloise, I, I think you gotta tap. Like those there are trades are happening anyway. Like six on each to top deck. There should be like another defender. There should be a doom card. Doom card would be immediate lethal. Doom card would be really good. Not. Oh, that's good. It's uh, it's, a, it's decent. It, it's on the smaller side. Side, but now it's decent for sure. So now. Um, oh. 
Sixo is going to try and find something that deals two damage. Consecration through Silver Champion. Mm. I, I don't know like, if I like this, by the way. I think that the Imp Gang boss could have went face and just like... Well, it still sets up lethal, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. I was like thinking if, if you trade one Imp instead. Oh! Uh -huh. oh. That's not it. No! Secret Keeper top cut. No. Uh -oh. Hey, good news. We're gonna see that deck in action again. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to see it again. It looked like a really fun deck, not only to to watch to play, but to also wa also watch. It seems so cool. I really enjoyed when we see those uh, completely new archetypes come out. And in this case, it's the the deck is based around that uh, mysterious challenger. The stats on it are quite solid, so you don't need to bring uh, bring all that many. Like um, you don't have to get all five secrets with it when you play it. But the downside to playing that card is, uh, is is putting those secrets in if you draw them early. And it's almost like drawing half a card when you draw something like Noble Sacrifice. Maybe one fourth of a card if you draw Repentance. It's so horrible. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It, it also feels like a deck that its its value gets so much better if you draw a Secret Keeper on turn one. It's kind of like oh, yeah. Undertaker, but much better than Undertaker. It's, like like, Undertaker. it's much more punishing if you don't draw it on turn one, basically. How do you stop that thing? Like we we see all seen now, like who, who played uh, with all the Undertakers. We've seen it when when it happens on turn one that it hits the board. So if if there's like a secret keeper on turn one, when you go first, then turn two, playing double secrets, you have three, four on the board. It's no longer frost bolt a bull. Frost bolt a bull. Yeah, that's or good. Dark bolt a bull. I think it's actually more balanced than Undertaker because with Undertaker you're actually just still playing your minions, right? If oh, you yeah. play a Talon you... Secret, you're kind of like, eh. yes. yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that's the um, that's the balance there. But hey, imagine if the Secret Keeper in turn one, and then you have like the Get Down and the Avenge. That is like the dream, right? Because if they attack <laughs> into anything, your Secret Keeper gets to be like a million health, a million damage. Yeah, like the comparison to Undertaker, it's not exactly like accurate because of the way that hun in, uh, in Hunter you used to play good cards, like the, the Death Rattle cards were, were cards that were good enough to get played on their own already, unlike the Secrets. But it's still like, it kind of snowballs in, in the same fashion at times, or it's possible at least. Mm -hmm. I, I do have to wonder, how do these other decks do against this kind of Paladin, like Gar's Priest? Eloise's Paladin. Um, do we have any theory crafting here? It feels like Gara's Priest, especially, I would say, would do pretty well. It has a lot of early game minions and also has like Holy Smite to take care of the initial um, Secret Keeper. I think Gara's Priest is pretty well positioned, but um, Eloise's Paladin was that slow one. I'm not yeah. sure. Slow Paladin might be a problem, but I'm just looking, thinking about, about the last game. And if Sixo had Eye for an Eye, he would have won the game. <laughs> wow. No. He's playing the wrong secrets there. <laughs> One copy of Eye for an Eye might be good. I don't know. One day. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can catch your opponent off guard with it too. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, what? I shouldn't attack with my Molten Giant against your face first? Mm hmm. <laughs> Alright, 6 0 Druid versus Gar Priest. Temple Storm just tied up the series, so we are going to effectively see a best of three from here on out. Yeah. Sixers Druid again. Let's see if uh, he, he gets, gets to play the Darnassus Aspirant this time around. It's an interesting card. What do you guys think of it? I, I played a little bit with it and uh, I'm not sure. It, it's not a wild growth, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I, uh, so first at first glance, I thought that Darnassus Aspirant was kind of like your wild growth. Um, you know, your third wild growth, I guess. It's not that good. You will always play wild growth over Darnassus Aspirant. But it's actually a very interesting card. Because if you actually manage to kill in your turn, uh, you can actually trick the mana crystal, right? So turn to Aspirant, and then, you know, they play Knife Juggler, and then you play Yeti, and then sacrifice the Aspirant. You actually, in a sense, gain the coin. And in that comparison, it's actually just strictly better than Cut Purse, right? Interesting. I haven't thought about that. But for me, it's been a tiny bit, uh, like overall, it's been a tiny bit uh, like underwhelming. It's, um, it's amazing when you get to play it on turn 2, or maybe coin it on turn 1. But if you draw it on a later turn, it uh, like after turn five, it's just a horrible top deck. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it reminds me a horrible top deck. Uh -huh. It reminds me a lot of the um, the totem golem. It's exactly the same concept. If you draw it on turn two, it's amazing. Yeah. But if you get it on a later turn, it's really underwhelming. 
Yeah, a lot of the good two drops in the game are like multi-purpose. With, for example, like the Sun Fury Protector is a is a two drop that uh, kind of does still work on later terms. Knife Juggler also because it, in a, in the Zoo Warlock you can it's a lot of pressure if you play it on turn two, but you can also combo it with Implosion. Works in Paladin, you can combo it with Master for Battle. Mm -hmm. But uh, Darkness Aspirant doesn't really like fully feel that uh, like the double purpose role, in my, in my opinion. It, does, it right. doesn't have a, have a use for on later turns, like a lot of the best two jobs in the game do, like Shrink Meister also. Well, yeah, of course. It does fizzle out quite well, but uh, Gara's start is exactly what a Priest player is looking for. Yes, that's 3-5 wow. against the Druid, it's it's really amazing. A Druid doesn't have those, well, well now they kind of might have a mulch, but we don't want to mulch this anyway. But uh, Druid, Druid has to has to kill that minion by, da by damage, and... Uh, and dealing five uh, this early on, it's it's almost impossible. Yep. You have to like do it over multiple times. Feelings chosen looks pretty juicy. It only gets stopped by the only card six of had is in his hand. Yeah, good. this game would just end right here if there was no silence for that five eight. I don't think there was there could would be anything that uh, that six could do if that uh, if there was no silence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Holy Smite is gonna possibly do some work, and oh wow, it seems like Gar's gonna save it for possibly a spell power uh, smite, even. Interesting. No, I, I, I can't do it. I don't know. Well, I, I guess it's fine. Alright, Emperor's gonna come down here. Yeah. So, Corrupt or and uh, Trade looks to be the only way to get rid of it. Pretty good way of dealing with it. Yeah, it is pretty small. Yeah, but the um, tutor's still alive. Mm. Yeah. Now Azure Drake will come down. With yeah. the Wrath. Yeah, Seems Druid will pretty good. get the board again. That lore, that's a great draw. Oh man. Yeah, um, safe, so. Yeah, Amnesiac was also like telling me how when you play his, uh, well, this is basically Amnesiac's list, right? Uh, you, s you want your card draw against Priest so badly because it's Usually down to uh, whoever has more cards wins the game, uh, and there you go. Urshia of Lord yeah, does exactly that. I completely that. agree. It's really hard for a priest to keep up with the Ancient of Lords, even with one. But if there's two Ancient of Lords, it's uh, it feels almost impossible. Yeah, I feel like uh, Amnesia's list is pretty good against priests uh, as far as Druid decks go, since it has two Azure Drakes as well as the two Ancients of Lore. So there's even yeah. a higher chance to uh, cycle into something. Yeah. It's um, it's interesting. I like the matchup a lot. It, it can be argued that uh, or whoever is uh, is the favorite. Sometimes a priest can pull off those amazing starts. Like for example here, that Valence John. Like I said, it could have been end of the game if there was no silence. So priest can do that sometimes with the buffs or or in the older versions maybe with uh, like a Blade Master Circle. That was that was just a game winning play on its own. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the card draw, the Druid card draw in the late game with those lords and the Astro tracks, it's it's so almost impossible to keep up. Give up with. Mm. It was actually quite interesting how uh, the a few turns just went by. Uh, so Sixo decided not to use the Wrath and established the Shredder instead. Uh, feels like the one mana Wrath is a bit more flexible later on, and the Shredder is kind of harder to pull off. And Gara, on the other hand, is going to actually get a little bit of value from that. Player. Yeah, he got a little bit punished by that. I feel like I I, I don't know exactly. I, I guess he wanted to be mana efficient and the broth, yeah, like the, the broth is more flexible, so that that's like the thing. But but now the wrath doesn't kill the uh, corruptor fully, right? Because uh, oh, the spell power is lost. He really got punished for that. Okay, this are we gonna see? Oh wow, that's a zombie yeah. child in a sense. Zombie child is pretty good here. Yep. That keeper still. Ooh, can he use wow. it? Wow. How well can he use it? Not the best. <laughs> so here, at eight mana. You kind of want to use all your mana. At the same time, you kind of want to draw the ancient of lore. But when you draw, you can't deal with the board. So tricky, tricky situation. Yeah, you could swipe. And draw them, maybe like hero power, swipe and, and trading there. Okay. I guess as long as you kill, kill the cleric, uh, that's yeah. a good move. Yeah, just putting as much power in the board as possible relative your, to your opponent. Still killing the 
The Wrath. He could have went for The Wrath and Violet the Shredder. I think I would like it slightly more, because now that Twilight Drake gets a trade with the Shredder, he could have protected his Shredder. Yeah. And the power, the power level seems a, a lot about around the same. Mm-hmm. But I think this, his, like, yeah, yeah. I, th- I, th- I think his rationale is that he wanted the Wrath to hit something um, like more expensive, and like like you don't feel good about Wrathing a two two Twilight Whelp. No, but, but it's I, also like it, it effectively it would save his Shredder, the front half of the Shredder, which is right. this has to be about something. Because Wrath is kind of like buying it. If some he was in a one mana. Oh! Whoa! That is what? actually very meaningful too. Wow! Look at the goddess face. He's like, what? Oh man! All the cards in guards are red now. Oh man! That has got to be the best one, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. I think he at that point he probably wanted to Vulgin and then smite, but he was un- unable to do so. Oh man! That was that's a minor setback. Yeah, it's even less likely these days since there's more like two drops in the game. With <laughs> yeah, that's true. Wow. Are we finally gonna see the Wrath? He's been holding on it for so long. Yeah. No. Well, this this really? Twilight Drake once again is only three attacks, so everything is gonna survive in six aside. And now Gar is facing the same problem. Battle cries cost two more. Yeah. Makes the light bomb any good? Like you're gonna have to do it. Yeah. There's the Doctor Boom. There's no oh, Shadow of Death yet. Oh man. Oh, well, this is there next turn, but there's Savage Roar as well. Wow, this is actually yeah. gonna be a very, very close game. It, it sure is. It's, it's so close. Oh man, and the Shredder's to back that up as well. Do you have to Vulgin and Smite here just to stay alive? Yeah, you have to. You can, there's no way you can leave that up. But man. even then, there's still gonna be so much stuff remaining. Oh, man. This is pretty intense. I thought the priest had it because like it was just a dream start, right? But then Keeper of the Grove definitely, you know, stopped that yeah. from happening. Oh Whoa. man! Oh. oh man! Is this lethal? We have six plus six is twelve, and this is 28, uh, 26 damage. So fifteen plus twelve. One off, I think. Yeah, one off, one off. Because you can also mm-hmm. innovate here part. Oh man! What damage of lethal? Oh. So, okay, so instead, no, I mean, I, I definitely silence the uh, Vulgin here and, uh, and cycle the Wrath because you really want to draw something else, right? Okay, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah. So if you draw a Drew of the Claw, you can cycle a Boombot. There we go, see, exactly. Wow. Wow, what a turnaround. Yeah, that sure was. Oh, Gar got some RNG there with the one attack of the Boombot. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm just joking. Yeah, yeah, what <laughs> is just too crazy? Yeah. Uh, so, dude, don't the druid of the claw? What well, can go wrong if you don't? Are you worried about a second light bomb? Yeah, I was oh, thinking gosh. about it, but I guess you don't care about it all that much. Like, even no, if I, I charge here just because of the possible Shriekmeister Cabal move. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Yep. It would probably still win. I'm pretty sure it, it would be little no matter what. That's true, but um, yeah, I like charging more. It deals damage to the face. Yeah, I like the charge. It's a tiny bit better. Even if there was the light bomb, it would still leave up there. Like the boom bot would still go to face. The keeper would survive. The pilot from the from this radar would come out. That's just game right there. Wow, what a crazy game! Yeah, it was. It was really good. It was pretty good. Oh, With the BM the going to the first. Door. The reverse <laughs> combo. Oh man. You can use up to two innervates too. Yeah. Uh, only like. Yeah, 8 out of 10. No, it's 7 out of 10. He also could have tried to see what's in the strider. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Alright, well, um, there you go. Um, Team Archon is on match point against Temple Storm, and Sixo is down to his secret keeper, secret challenger, everything. Mysterious everything on the line. That's amazing. That's so hilarious. That oh. Paladin six. Can, can you believe it? Like two hundred and fifty thousand, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and Team Archon is now relying on sec- Paladin secrets. Out of all the things possible, <laughs> Paladin secrets are what needs to go. <laughs> Oh man, and in, you know, in arena drafts, uh, there's like ratings out of a hundred, right? Every class rates secret people a one, except for like secret oh. classes where they rate it a four out of a hundred. And now, yeah, like you said, it's so funny that that card might just win two hundred fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I think there's repentance in the deck, and uh, yeah, <laughs> like wow. I think Tempo Storm will be looking to put up the priest again. I think they actually wanted the priest to queue up into the paladin. It just okay. feels like it's a slightly better matchup with like the uh, the whelps and the um, just like a lot of the controlling cards, especially like Holy Smite, will be very valuable as well. Mm -hmm. Did yeah, you think I there's think so. a Wild Power Master in that list? No, no, no way. Okay. I think that list is like. 29 cards for, um, similar to the list that Reynad used on stream. Okay. And the I one, yeah. Yeah. The one card difference is the light bomb. No, I haven't seen anyone run wild pyros in, in dragon list. I've seen like five different dragon priest lists and i never seen a wild pyro. Mm -hmm. Seems like they really don't need to use that one damage AoE if they have such sticky minions and just, you know, you just need to support them with your heals and whatnot. Yeah. Oops, there you go. Exactly like you said, Savage. The priest is going to go against yeah. the paladin. And uh, we're running down to the fi finals of this series, five four. Mm -hmm. I will fight. <laughs> oh man! So this is the problem, right? You just draw your secrets every single time. Oh, there's divine favors in this deck. Oh yeah, I mean, if your if your deck is running like what ten one drops, even abuses <laughs> twelve one drops, I think that's yeah. I guess you have to play. Oh wow! He, they, did Sixo actually mulligan the Divine Favor out? Wow. I, yeah, I think he, so. he he's probably like hard mulliganing for the Secret Keeper. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Squire. So 14 one yeah. drops, right? With the Iron Squire now too? Mm. I wouldn't be surprised if the most expensive minion in this deck... Oh, it's, oh, it's Mysterious Challenger actually, never mind. Yeah. Also, yeah, it's Mysterious yeah. Challenger is the most expensive. Well, that Squire giving uh, got a reasonable turn here, mm -hmm. without that too. We're gonna see a uh, abusive here, though. Yeah, oh, I think so. Yeah. And that's the perfect top deck. We have coin oh. and shoot me, but really nice. Yeah, now this looks like a normal deck. Yeah. yeah. Except for the redemption, that's uh, that's not normal. Wait, so what are you saying, Monk? Are you saying a normal deck is normal paladin is better than the secret paladin? No, I'm just making an observation that this is uh, slightly more to what we're used to. Okay. And uh, I don't know. Like, if we had seen this hand from 6 0, we wouldn't like be too surprised, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. Don't hate. Don't hate the deck. Mm, you see, Garo not played the, the Twilight Velp there. That's because uh, then his uh, Twilight Guardian and the Blackening Technician would uh, not really function for the, because of the lack of the, the dragon. He ended up throwing another Twilight Guardian, so it, it would have worked out better if he just dropped the well, but there was no way to know the next drop would also be a dragon. Right. That's a very good observation. And now, Sixo, uh, here it seems like a very easy Guardian of Kings on the Shield of Minibot until you factor in the um, Holy Nova. So we want to see if Holy Nova can actually make anything stay alive. And, um, well, actually, it's not. Wait. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait on the mini bot. Wait yeah, a minute. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Like one of the best things you can do is use it on mini bot because your opponent yeah. he can like sh either shadow or death or holy nova, but he can't do both. Whoa. This kind of backfired pretty bad for yeah. for six. Hmm. Well, I'm really curious about that player. We have a bunch of secrets now. Wow, oh, if you actually buffed up the shield in mini, but that would have been so insane. Yeah. There had to be a misplay. I wonder. Mm, I, 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 I kind of want to hear Sixo's comments on why, why he did that play. But uh -huh. uh, maybe after the game. Um, Here, nothing too spectacular. The redemption, only gonna <laughs> redeem. Uh, one drop. Unless he's going for the trades, he could potentially trade all the one drops, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, you don't know. <laughs> I don't know anymore. For uh, yeah. Yeah, this Holy Nova is going to be so good. Yeah. But what exactly is the ordering here? Oh, uh, attack first. we have attack first, and then we're going to proc a redemption and an avenge. Ooh. So if it hits the mini bot, that'll be huge. Oh yeah, but it's only one out of five. Not quite. And the get down guy actually comes back alive. It's a defender. <laughs> yeah. Don't see that every day. Well, I mean, it does still survive. He gets to keep it, keep the four one. So. 
Mm -hmm. well, so the not not completely useless. Xixxon needs definitely needs uh, like a mysterious challenger or divine favorite at this point too. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad, but I, I don't think it's enough. Yeah, you would yeah, think that Sixo actually won the game if he actually buffed up the mini bot, right? There was supposed to be not like what, eight more damage on the face. Yeah, yeah. Well, the real key is that Gara wouldn't have been able to deal with that mini bot. That's true. Uh, yeah, exactly. He, he would have had to like uh, use his Blackman Corruptor twice, uh, but and that's like a little ridiculous. Oh, actually, you might be playing around Shadow or Death, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's happening. But to be that makes sense. Sure, if sure, you're sure. playing around Shadow or Death, though, I feel like. Like even if you get Shadow or Death, then uh -huh. the rest of your board still stays up, and uh, you, you can't can really like okay with the Shadow or Death. Mm, okay. And uh, yeah. he, uh, didn't he even have like a Redemption up? So he would have gotten the Shielded Mini. No, he didn't have a Redemption, but still, yeah. Okay. Oh. Well, well, it's at that point where um seems like the Paladin is out of steam. Yeah, you could say that, and uh, now. It Gara, Gara can just, uh, he can play the Murmur stage and then can safely just balance Chosen it too. Oh! Wow. And there's a power shield. Yeah. I wield the power. That's I think we're gonna see to the Murmur me. stage with, that, with the shield. Yeah. And sweet. Divine favor into Consecration. How about that? Is that what we're looking for? Oh, mm. we got one piece of the solution. Yeah. Now define favor into... Leroy? How, wait, how good is a Mysterious Challenger on its own? It would be it's... really good. I think there's a lot of secrets left. Did he play like any of... Did he play any of the secrets, the uh, two copies yet? No. Everything so is I, just... I think there would be five secrets coming out of it if he was to draw it right now. Right. But now Ezera just says tick tick, you know? I'm just gonna... That's true. I'll value oh. you with all these damage cards. Uh, funny enough, Ezera Awakens might be the worst card. <laughs> yeah, I guess you can't cast it. Oh, interesting. Oh, no value in the heal. I wanted to keep the smite. It would allow him to push for 7 damage if he, if he just smited the one. Yep. No. Oh, man. Well, that's not the top deck he wanted. Actually, yeah, that, that makes sense. If you, if you're, uh, if the priest boy does death your shitty mini bot, you could have everything else as well. So that's a very good point. Well, it's just running out of time. Oh, and that's that, lethal. That's that's a good one. Divide favor though. Whoa. Oh, Redemption. Oh. Wow. Well. Not the two cards oh, okay. looking for. Not what we're looking for. And we're gonna go down to the final game, where uh, once again we're looking at a um, possible punishment for bringing this weird paladin list with all the secrets. No oh, man, Team Archon with five old deck lists. The druid had some tiny tweaks in it, but basically five old lists and one fresh TGD based deck. And now it's the TGD based deck that's letting them down. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they actually decided together that, oh yeah, Secret Paladin, let's play that, that's really good. Uh, yeah. Maybe the deck list isn't quite refined yet. I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah I, I, I mean, mm, mm. it runs really, really low, co uh, low cost cards. There's like, what, 14 one drops at least? Which is something you don't see every day. And then you have you have to draw like divine favor early yeah. on too, right? I was so surprised that um, the divine favor was actually just mulligan. I guess you really want to look for that secret keeper that badly, but you have like so many bad cards. Like all the secrets are bad. I, I think that deck is actually sixteen one drops. Like the sixteen. Yeah, the ten secrets, two argent squires, two abusives, and the two secret keepers. So more than half of your deck of one drops. That's insane. Yeah, well, I think you have to keep the, the divine favor in, in in that deck. I mean, you you know that you're playing as a slow priest. You know that the divine favor with all those one drops. It's gonna be like a turn four and turn five. You just draw five cards. It's it's almost right. guaranteed. How do you not keep it? I oh, know. Well, last game, guys. It's gonna be interesting. And oh man, Zombie the uh. dream hand for Eloise there. Wow. That is just oh wow. Oh, <laughs> it got even better. <laughs> 
All right. Well, I think uh, we kind of know where this is gonna go. Uh, the um, the shooter mini box is gonna save six souls just a little bit, but man, this is just this might just be a steamroll. Yeah. Not only is uh like Eloise is gonna cover up perfectly, and that's gonna be even better since she's gonna be able to play like one card every turn at least, mm -hmm. and that's gonna like disallow for divine favor to get much value. That's true. Wow. Yeah. Um. That zombie tells so amazing. The difference between having that and not having it against the deck like the one that Xixo is running is, is absolutely huge. Oh, but that's a great pickup. That's pretty good. Xixo still behind, but that gives him some hope. Well, I guess uh, you have an option of actually killing a 1-1 one -one here instead. Uh, I mean, you're killing the zombie shot next turn anyways, so it's completely fine. Yeah. And yeah, like Monk said, every card, every turn is a card played. That makes Divine Favor that much more worse. Yeah, the equality not gonna find too much value. Is it one extra boom? Maybe those are a little bit slow. Well, equality does help against Mysterious Challenger. You know, it does deal five to it, which is fine. Well, it's, it's decent, I guess. Yeah. It also like kind of oh, wow. counters Avenge a bit. Mm. Yeah. That too. Then it seems like the correct, at least from like our point of view, it would be that to trade those all, the one ones I guess, because yeah, because uh, of the consecration potential. Yep. So now consecration is really bad. Uh yes. <laughs> Pretty Traveler, protector. Okay. Yep. That's not he bad. To, yeah, the one of the juggles has to hit the minions. It doesn't matter which minion he hits, so, but not face. Okay. All right, good enough. Yep. Oh, Eloise shaking her head a little bit there. Yep. Going. Oh it's man. Not. Oh wow. All right. Well, Shredder is gonna come down here, and yep. uh, yeah, we actually Sixo's best draw right now will be a secret, so they can actually use the divide river for more mm -hmm. cards. Oh, but is that better? Wow. Seems pretty good. Yeah. So now the equality. Not too bad. Six damage to the face. Equality is not bad. I mean, it does give a way to deal with that. It's not exactly. perfect. Oh, just to sure. That's not a great card. It's just uh, teching against the wrong matchups here. Yeah. That card is like, I think it's like actually the best card against certain matchups like Priest and Warrior. Mm -hmm. But it just doesn't match up here against an aggro deck. No, it doesn't do anything. Alright, an immediate Consecrate comes down here. We do not want to see a Quartermaster from Sixth side. And yeah, it actually gives time for Eloise to establish the Justicar and actually just hero power Sixth out of the game, right? Potentially. Oh! Wow, I think that's even better. That's like, way yeah, better. Considering what Xixo is playing, I, I, I like that more. Okay. And there are no Murlocs that are actually like... Yes, uh, yeah, there's like player. multiple bodies. He's gonna have three minions on the board. I think that's huge. Because all the minions from Xixo are fairly small. Yeah, not yeah, only Murloc does... Yeah, is insane. Uh -huh. Yeah, not only do they have multiple minions, but your opponent has to deal with them or you're gonna keep spawning like uh, huge Murlocs. Yeah. It's an interesting situation. I, I like the Murloc Knight a lot here, but it, it, on the other hand, those like the Sylvanas and the Justicar, they can be tricky to play later on. While the Murloc Knight might be something that uh, is easier to squeeze in when you play Wait, something there, else on the same turn. There are no Murlocs to have a negative effect, right? Nope. Uh, no. Um, there's some really great ones. Like the like, charge. Uh, like the yeah, old Murkai and the and the the one that pops. Uh, uh. Oh! 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 oh, oh, oh. Wow! Devil! Oh my God! Well, at least uh, six of drew a secret there, so the divine fear is actually oh. gonna pop three cards. But oh man! What old a... Murkai. Oh, secret keeper comes into the hand. True silver champions here as well. Have we seen a quartermaster from Xixo in any of these games? Because I, I don't I don't think we have. Oh the repentance! The repentance! <laughs> wow. Oh man. 
All right, so Avenge is gonna actually pop here, and the Murkai is probably have to trade with it. But I think you definitely hero power first. So if you get a war leader, the Murkai actually stays alive. Yeah, but he could go. She she could go for just a Nalder hero power. Is that better? It might oh, be. If you hero power cool. and outdoor, you actually keep the most minions on the board. Yeah, so that has it to would be work the out the best. Yeah. It would work out the best for sure. It, I think it also depends on what secrets you expect. Yeah. Like what this last secret is. Oh man, I would love playing against the secret power. Like it's like kind of making a puzzle for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> You'd also love to play against it because you'd probably win, judging oh, from the track record. Going, what's the Murloc right. this time? Murloc. Oh, yeah. that's, no, that's that's the worst one, I believe. Yeah. Even like the one-one grim scale would probably be better here. All right, repentance hits the outdoor. That's not really that important. And there are no secrets left. No, nope. this looks pretty bad. Don't think this uh, is gonna work out. Bad. I think uh, Eloise is gonna seal this game out. Seems likely. Yeah, I mean, there's no. I don't think there are any chargers in this deck, right? Wow. Okay, okay now that's, that's done. Now. That's not gonna happen then. <laughs> I mean, if you're trading at this point, value minions are gonna take over. So mm -hmm. it's not gonna work. The light protects me. Oh my. That Murloc's just coming huge this game. She did get a little bit lucky. The first one was the best possible she could have hoped for in the form of the old Murkai. The second one, uh, on the other side, but uh, it was better to get it that, that way around than, uh, than first get the small one and then the big one. That did guy the, is so good. Did the big one do anything besides hit face on the first time? I don't think it actually hit anything. Right? No, but I mean, it's still cool to have. Yeah. It was for extra damage. <laughs> Yeah. And it didn't, like, if, if she got the small one first, uh, it would have just died to the, the weapon. Yeah. I think there was a one, one attack weapon. Put this apple well, on your head. Good. Ordering mm -hmm. from Eloise there. Repentance. Repentance is going to hit for one. I have no time. And, she could um, fight, like, juggle, uh, juggle the minions instead of using the weapon. Yeah, that would have saved one health, actually. No, it, it's already really... Ooh! Oh, is it not over yet? It's probably too late, it's though. Still it has to be too late. In, come on, yeah. But still, that is pretty cool. And, um, yep. Mysterious Challenge is going to float in the sky for a bit there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Four seconds. Wow, full set when it's too late. Let me but think. isn't it where there's only one Avenger? Uh, one uh, get down, and then, you know, Eloise can just use his use her uh, weapon, and it just go off his. Mm -hmm. And that's just it. That's just game. Uh, oh, that has to be game. Defender. <laughs> so yeah, just check with your weapon first, and then just go off his. Cause uh, how much damage is this? It's uh, Six, sixteen, uh, I think. Yeah, with Argus is enough. Yeah. Get down! It's actually exactly full. Wow. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> All those secrets. Uh huh. And I guess the last one is just uh. Doesn't really matter as, as well, because uh, all of them are going to go for face, and um, yeah. Seems like a Temple Storm is going to take this series. <laughs> Hello, yeah. This is Hello, he's so relieved. And yeah, yeah. Halnak is going to go through, and Temple Storm is one step closer to finale. Team Arcon is not out yet though. Um, it is a double elimination bracket. Yeah. Wow. Sixo, you, you can clearly see he was frustrated with himself and his decision to bring this type of deck. Right. Even though, I have to say, like that last game was pretty close. It was. Uh, I would say that the Priest game would have been really close if, um, if Sixo had actually used Bliss of Kings on the minibot. Right? Yeah. Like we actually, um, you know, kind of talked it out a little bit afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, that was the match to win. I don't think that he was ever going to beat a zombie chow opening with like just a perfect curve. But yeah, uh, yeah I think there's one more thing that um, we need to remind viewers is that um, everybody in the phase two cannot change their deck list, right? So they're actually sealed into their deck list until the end of phase two. 
So um, yeah, we're gonna see that mysterious challenger secret deck come out again tomorrow. Wow. Do, do we have the standings That's available? Sick. Do we have the standings that we can show on screen? I hope we do. Um, well. Apparently we don't, and that's... Oh, there we go! Yes! We got him. Okay, perfect. So there you go. Um, Temple Storm is going to advance to the winner's match, where the winner of that series is going to go to the live finale uh, later in September. And then we also will put uh, Team Archon there in the loser's match. We'll do an extra kind of like a redemption match, if you may. Uh, and there you go. Yeah, so Temple Storm is going to face the winner of the next match, Force and Boys versus Nilhum. Um, Tumble Storm overall, they brought some pretty interesting decks, and uh, like they'll be scouted out, but I don't think it's like that big of a deal because the only like really wild deck is Eloise's Zoo. Yeah, yeah, they did get pretty well scouted because they uh, like, both teams used all their decks, right? So um, mm -hmm. you could say that it's maybe a little bit a bit of bigger advantage for um, <laughs> the other the other guys that are playing later, but I think in the end it doesn't really matter. You just gotta have to play your best. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah. And like, uh, yeah, it's it's like that we'll, we'll see most of the stuff from the other teams too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So, actually, right now the record between Archon and Tempo Storm is one one. Archon won the first match, right? And then Tempo Storm won the second match. So, you know, what I'm predicting is that these two teams will meet up in like the losers bracket finals, oh. and uh, we'll have to we'll have to play a best of three. Uh, like the third match is the decider. To see oh, who man. moves on to the live finale. Wouldn't that be a story? Uh -huh. But um, I think we're going to go to a uh, short break. And um, after that, we're going to see Force and Boys versus Hillam. And we have 12 brand new decks. I'm mean, hopefully, right? Hopefully. Maybe just 10. Maybe we have two patrons. But we can, uh, we'll have to see. So stick with us, guys. We're going to have a short three minute break.